Championship Sunday from the Oxford Regional in Oxford, Mississippi. Before we get to the regional final, an elimination game. Jacksonville State and Clemson coming up from Swayze Field. NCAA Regional Baseball is presented by Capital One. It is day three of the Oxford Regional. We got started on Friday with Clemson and Illinois. Clemson won that game. Ole Miss beat Jacksonville State. Elimination game yesterday. The Gamecocks beat the Fighting Illini last night in the 1-0 game. It was Ole Miss over Clemson. And so we have an elimination game. The Clemson Tigers out of the ACC and Jacksonville State out of the Ohio Valley Conference. Good Sunday afternoon and welcome to Oxford, Mississippi. Alongside former Alabama star and big leaguer Lance Cormier, I'm Richard Cross. Glad to have you along. This is the day, this is the game where if you want to keep playing, you got to find a win. You're right, and that's where it all I mean, it comes down to this Sunday. It's going to be a long day. You know it got a lot ahead of you, but you got to win the first one to play in that second one. Let's look at how we got to this point yesterday. Jacksonville State in the early game facing elimination against Illinois. Well, seventh inning is when they got things going. Nick Gaddis yanks one down the line. Strachan goes the opposite way, gets a two-run home run. There had been no offense prior to that point, and then they add to it in the eighth inning. Yeah, Andrew Naismith jumps up, gets a big double down the line. They score two right there. That puts them ahead by one. Then all of a sudden, an error by the Illinois defense. Very rare. Scores Naismith, puts him up too. And then in the night camp, Ole Miss and Clemson. The Rebels got the party started early with the long ball. Cole Zabowski with the shot over the right center field wall. Cooper Johnson goes deep to just left of straightaway center field. And then late in the ball game, it was Kevin Graham with his 10th home run of the season. And on top of that, a dominating performance on the mound. Absolutely. And you talk about fireworks. It was fireworks for Doug McKenzie as well. He had nine strikeouts, went a career high eight innings. And then Parker Caracci comes in, finished it all for the Rebels. So Clemson got to try and get the offense going. You look at yesterday for these two teams. It was late, but Jacksonville State got the bats going. Seven runs, nine hits, and they got their first ever postseason win for Clemson. Got to try and find that offense on this Sunday. Yeah, this is two of our, we, we looked at coming into the play, the best powerful offenses, and they can catch fire quick, and that's what you saw with Jacksonville State. But you're right, to me it's going to be who can find enough pitching to hold the offenses down today. One of these teams will play Ole Miss in the regional final tonight. The other will pack their bags and get ready for the summer. We've got more coming up with you from Oxford after this. Back at Oxford University Stadium, Swayze Field on the campus of Ole Miss. Ole Miss awaiting the winner of this game. Coming up later tonight, Jacksonville State making its fifth all-time NCAA tournament appearance. The Gamecocks won their first ever postseason game yesterday, a win against Illinois. They've got nine walk-off wins, including five in the last 14. 13 of their last 14 games have been wins. Trey Kirkland has led off both of Jacksonville State's games with base hits. Had a double on Friday night, a single yesterday. Nick Gaddis with a home run, Alex Strachan with a home run, and it felt like Lance the Bats kind of came to life yesterday at the end of the ball game. And I know something Jim Case was excited to see. Yeah, that's sort of it, it, they caught fire, and that's the type of offense they do have. It said it, they were anemic for the first six innings, and all of a sudden, the seventh inning, they got the right guys on in front of the right guys, and the, the two guys drove them in with homers. On the mound today for Clemson is Brooks Crawford. He is 1-4 and four on the year with a 628 ERA. The senior right-hander from Bishop, Georgia, is making his sixth postseason appearance all-time for Clemson. His first pitch is a strike. Underway in an elimination game, Jacksonville State out of the OVC and Clemson from the ACC. Crawford's going to attack these Gamecock hitters with fastball 87 to 91 miles an hour. Curveball would be a curveball changeup is, is all speed pitches, but biggest thing with Crawford doesn't have that true out pitch, so the strikeout numbers are not going to be able to rack up just because the all, pit, all speed pitches are just not the strikeout type. Big chopper left side. Sunday hop for the third baseman. Hawkins, strong throw. And Trey Kirkland goes down on a ground out. Boy, the big thing you see right here are starters versus relievers for Clemson. The starters, they came in thinking they were going to do a good job of being able to pitch deep into the games, but they have not, especially yesterday, Matt Clark, their ace. 
but the relievers have come in, and this is why they're still in the, the regionals. The reliever, relievers have come in and shut the door. 1-4-9 ERA in their 12 innings. First pitch misses for ball one to Cole Frederick. Frederick looking for his first hit of the Oxford Regional. And coming in, he had reached base safely in 18 consecutive games. 0 for 8 so far on the weekend. If there's anybody who's going to be comfortable on the mound for Clemson, it's got to be Brooks Crawford. This is his 73rd career appearance. 28th start. Career record of 16 and 6 with 188 innings pitched. Two balls and a strike to Cole Frederick. Count even to two and two on the foul tip. And when you look at Brooks Crawford, kind of the arc of his career, he was the top reliever on the staff in 2016. He missed the second half of the year in 2017 with an illness. A year ago, a weekend starter. And he's kind of bounced back and forth between being a starter and a reliever this season. Yeah, coming into this play as a I mean, freshman, sophomore, junior year was 15 and two. I mean, the senior year has, has been a bit, little bit of a disappointment for him being one and four at the ERA of six. But I mean, as a freshman and reliever, you know, welcome to college baseball was one of their go-to guys. This one flagged at third by Hawkins. A nice play in the throw just in time at first to beat Cole Frederick. Nice job right here by Hawkins. Full out dive. Able to get up. Lost the ball a little bit, but doesn't panic. Makes a nice, strong throw. And we've got a review already. It took us two hitters to get our first video review. Umpires will come together. Tim Vesey, the home plate umpire today. Adam Dowdy at first base is the crew chief. Bill Fisher is at second. Chris Simmons is at third. Nice hustle by Frederick to make it even close. Foots in the air on the bag. Looks like this one might get turned over. Umpires will connect all the headsets with the the review center. These are the plays that can be reviewed, including force and tag plays at any base, of which this one qualifies. I feel like we're pretty familiar with that list at this point. Yeah, that's what we've had, what is this, the eighth one? Four games. This is our fifth game. We've already had eight. And only one call has been overturned of the eight of uh, the previous seven video reviews. That's really close, isn't it? That's, it's close, but I think you're right, Richard. I think this will get overturned. See right, foot down, ball still hasn't entered the glove. I think that's probably the definitive angle that you get. And I have conclusive video evidence to overturn the call on the field. Umpires have done a really good job this weekend, and they will say that at first base, Cole Frederick beat it out. Nice play by Hawkins to stop that ball. I said Sunday Hop on the first one that he got. Right. That was anything but over at third base. Hall, Tia, DCO, and Green in the outfield. You've seen Justin Hawkins a couple of times already. Logan Davidson at short. Jordan Green at second. They've made pretty good tandem up the middle this weekend for Clemson with Bird and Wilkie catching. First hit of the NCAA tournament for Cole Frederick. He's a one-out base runner in this elimination game. recipe for success for the Gamecock lineup is to get as many guys on as you can before Alex Webb and Nick Gaddis. Those are their two main RBI guys. 101 total between the two of them. Pop-up shallow right. Late jump for Green, but he gets there with no trouble. Two down in the inning. Seems to me like a lot, these lineups are very similar. You know, top heavy with the RBI production. You got Davidson and Bird in the middle of the Clemson lineup. Gaddis and Webb in the middle of the Gamecock lineup. Both are the main run producers. 
I think that Monty Lee is hopeful that Brooks Crawford is going to feel like he's in kind of a happy place on the mound. His, he's had some success in the NCAA tournament. Fifth regional appearance, second time that he started in regional play, 11 and a third innings with the hit here in the first, just six hits allowed, only one earned run, nine strikeouts, three walks, and a sub one ERA. So even though this season has been up and down and maybe not what anybody had hoped for tied to Clemson, you hope that Crawford is able to kind of reestablish some of that postseason magic. Runner goes, pretty good jump, throw to second. That one's not even close. And a stolen base for Cole Frederick. That is the first stolen base of the regional. I think Jordan Green thought Cole Frederick came off the bag right here. One of those rare hit feet first slides. He might have come off, but I don't think the glove was still on him. The first thing right here, it pops up. It came off. They got it right. Yeah, we see some nifty little slides where guys using other hands. There was one, you see the one earlier in the regional where the guy slid feet first. You know, you see sometimes you'll see the swim move where yeah. they, they go over the glove. He did it with his foot. His foot was going to go. He, oh, he yeah. raised his foot up over the, over the tag, put his foot right back on the bag. Elimination games going on all over the country. They're in a weather delay with West Virginia leading four to nothing over Texas A&M in Morgantown. There's a strike to Nick Gaddis. Had a two-run home run yesterday that got the scoring started for Jacksonville State in the seventh inning. That was such a huge hit. And you talk about the team leader, the four-year guy at your program. Everybody's looking to him. And he came up huge at the moment that you absolutely needed it. And then everybody else followed. Swing and a miss, a strikeout. Brooks Crawford, good start on the mound. Nick Gaddis goes down swinging. And we go to the bottom of the first. And into the bottom of the first elimination game between Jacksonville State out of the OBC and Clemson from the Atlantic Coast Conference. Clemson coached by Monty Lee, 35 and 25 on the year, and even 500 at 15 and 15 in ACC play this year. Nearly one and a half home runs per game this season. That's 11th best in the entire country. And what a stretch it's been for Grayson Bird. 11 home runs in the last 17 games, including. Uh, including a home run here in the Oxford Regional. He's sitting in the three spot, the 321 average. Michael Green leads off. He's had a nice regional, four for nine this weekend. Well, yeah, the whole top of that lineup has had a nice regional. That's basically been all they've, ever, they've had so far since they got here in Oxford. Green has showed some power as well. Dylan Hathcock on the mound for Jacksonville State. Had his name called eight days ago in the Ohio Valley Conference Championship game. Pitched his team to a win. So he earned the automatic bid from the OVC into the field of 64. It's a ground out to start the ball game. So lefty Dylan Hathcock from Tallahassee, Alabama. 6'3", 225, sophomore. 3 and 0 on the year with a 4.01 ERA. How about just three decisions in making his 16th start? Well, it's one of those things he has a short leash. Uh, they've had a short leash with him all year, and that's what you're kind of looking at, especially as the postseason. You're going to see, hey, if I get, think about when you're talking about big leagues in the postseason, you're like, man, why is the start only going like three innings? It's just because the, the manager or coach thinks this is the time to go. But that's how they've kind of treated Hathcock. But last nine and two-thirds, only two earned runs. He's going to attack these Tigers with a fastball, curveball, changeup combo. Probably a little bit below the normal hitting speed, so looking to keep the hitters out in front of the, his fastball in the changeup. You know, does do a lot of strikes, only 20 walks in 60 and two thirds innings this year. Logan Davidson has just one hit on the weekend. 
This is one up and out of the zone there. Count even to two at two. Davidson was 0 for 5 yesterday and had a 56 game reached base safely streak snapped. It's last night against Ole Miss. And he's called out on strikes. A punch out there for Hathcock. And there are two down in the bottom of the first. Adams, Kirkland, and Robinson in the outfield. Robinson getting his first start of the weekend for Jacksonville State. Gaddis, Alexander, Frederick, and Strachan with Alex Webb catching. To me, that's just going to tell the story. The defense already have four errors this weekend in the regional play. Came in with 74, so they're fielding 966 as a team. If they're able to make the plays, the offense is good enough. I think they can do it. Grayson Bird, senior from Milton, Georgia, has already graduated from Clemson. Two balls and no strikes. Grayson Bird has been on a tear. Told you a few minutes ago, 11 home runs in the last 17 games. 16 long balls for the year. He chops this one to deep second. Frederick was playing back on the edge of the grass. Makes the easy play. One, two, three for Clemson in the bottom of the first. Jacksonville State gets a one-out base hit in the top of the first. Nothing for Clemson in the bottom of the half. And so we go scoreless to the second inning. Richard Cross, Lance Cormier with you from Swayze Field, the Oxford Regional. 5, 6, and 7 coming to the plate for Jacksonville State. Isaac Alexander, Alex Strachan, and Andrew Naismith for the Gamecocks. Crawford having a tough senior year, but you're right. You mentioned the his success that he has had in the NCAA regionals in his previous four outings, and that's something that you can draw back from. And I, I think that's what Coach Lee is hoping that when he put Brooks Crawford in the starting spot, going, "Hey, this guy's got some experience. I need to go with somebody that is, not, you know, this moment's not going to be too big for him." And so I think he feels really good with Brooks Crawford out there. So Monty Lee tucked away in the dugout. Isaac Alexander, a leadoff walk in the second inning. Starting pitching for Clemson has been tough so far in the regional. Their bullpen's been pretty good. Their starters, though, in the first two games have not gotten deep into ball games. Talking about Matt Clark in yesterday's game against Ole Miss. None of the starters have gotten past the fourth inning so far this weekend. Jacob Hennessy started the opener against Illinois. In that game against Illinois, Davis Sharp pitched six and two-thirds in relief en route to the win for Clemson in game one of the regional, fourth consecutive year that they had won the opening game, but they've lost five straight game twos, and that's why they are – once again, this year playing an elimination game on a Sunday afternoon. And to give the starters credit, Davis Sharp is a starter. He just came out of the bullpen, so he kind of gives a little bit of the positives to those bullpen numbers, but he, he was absolutely lights out. He looked good. Now tip, strike two. Called and stretch and goes away looking. That's the second strikeout early for Brooks Crawford. Nice fastball down and away. Got a little late life. Look at that ball come back. Looked like it was going to start off. The play comes right back right at the knees. 
Oh, nice Wilkie pitch. froze oh, it yeah. right there also. Sometimes, man, you're only as good as how good the catcher catches that ball. You get a catcher with a good, strong, you know, when you say strong arm, I'm not talking about the one he throws with. I'm talking about the one he catches with. That way he can stick that ball. You get him working with the umpire, steal you a couple strikes. Well, there's an art to framing pitches Absolutely. also, right? I mean, you, you, if you're jerky as a catcher where you're jerking the mitt back into the strike zone, you're not going to get much. It's that subtle movement, and then sometimes knowing when there needs to be no movement at all, you just need to lock it in. Absolutely, yeah. The umpire <laughs> hates to see that, and you'll see that a lot. You know, Little League guys, they think that's what it is to, to frame. You catch it, put it back in the strike zone, and umpire's like, no, man. Always heard catches though, you, you try to beat the ball to where it's going to go. So if I can beat it to the spot, and then I can, whether it's, you know, if I need to get it onto the plate, you can kind of catch, turn that wrist a little bit, you know, turn it down or suck it up. Out of, one catcher used to catch that breaking ball really to suck up the, the ball that was low into his crotch. I mean, and that, that was able to buy the low strike. Out the way, 0-2 with Naismith. And oh, by the way, Kyle Wilkie, pretty strong arm as well. You saw he's thrown out 15 runners trying to go this year. We've seen some good catchers this weekend. Jeff Cordy for Illinois threw out Sam Hall, who had 30 steals. Did that a couple of times on Friday. Cooper Johnson for Ole Miss on the Buster Posey watch list. And Wilkie as well. Nice play by Bird. He's just going to take the out at first base. Be sure of one for the second out of the inning. Alexander goes to second. Well, right right here. Nice play by Bird. Grayson pops up, and he goes to throw to second. Makes a smart decision because... Isaiah Alexander right there made Isaac Alexander made that run. He went into the baseline to kind of cut off the angle for Grayson Bird to throw, and that was a smart play right there. A lot of times you see guys throw, and then all of a sudden the runner will be in the way, hit him in the back, and all of a sudden you have no outs. That was a smart play. Two out runner at second. Ash Adams able to hold up, takes ball one. Tennessee and Liberty in the Chapel Hill Regional are playing in the top of the 10th inning, and Tennessee has taken a 6-5 to five lead, so a chance to stay alive and meet North Carolina later this afternoon. 1-1. One, one. And then they have had no share or uh, no shortage of excitement, I should say. Russ Chandler Stadium. In Atlanta, Georgia Tech Regional. Georgia Tech lost to Auburn last night when Auburn got a walk-off home run, a three-run jack from Stephen Williams to win 6-5. to five. So Georgia had to Tech had to turn around and play this morning. They were trailing Coastal Carolina. They're down 7-4 to four in that game. Coastal Carolina's pitching coach was ejected. Round ball up the middle. That's past Davidson. Isaac Alexander going to try to come around and score. Throw to the plate. Not in time. It's one to nothing. Jacksonville State with the lead on the two-out single from Nash Adams. Boy, the ball wasn't hit hard. Just looked like a routine ground ball, but shows the placement. Sometimes you just got to put the ball in play. Good things will happen. Nash Adams, the freshman, gets a huge RBI. Gets the game cocked on the board in the second inning. I thought that ball was just going to be right at the shortstop, but Davidson had him play a little bit more pull. You said in the second inning, Jacksonville State says yes, please. First run for the the uh, Gamecocks scored in an inning other than the seventh, eighth, or ninth. Ouch! Hey, they, they woke up earlier today. Different wake up call, maybe a different breakfast. The RBI single from Nash Adams. The second hit off of Crawford. Walk comes back to bite Clemson. And the Gamecocks with an early lead. So you had Georgia Tech lead, or, uh, trailing over Coastal Carolina. Pitching coach ejected for the Shanta Clears. 
They're down nine to seven, and guess what? Base is loaded with nobody out. <laughs> Next Ouch. half inning. Usually you'll see a coach go out there, get ejected, fires the team up. That, that not that, not quite right. It, it didn't work. <laughs> didn't work quite that way. Got an elimination game going on in Los Angeles yesterday. An onslaught of offense from Baylor. They won 24 to six in their game yesterday. UCLA lost to. Well, the Marymount, LMU last night. He stayed up late for the end of that one. Good ball game. It's a three to two win for the LMU Lions. And so you got Baylor in that prolific offense with an early three to two lead over UCLA. What you see right there, Kyle Wilkie looking at his wrist. That's the way the pitching coach will give the signs to the catcher now. A lot of times just a number system. This ball hit sharply into right field. Ball just kind of died in the air and fell inside the foul line. Back-to-back -back base hits. Chase Robinson doubles down the right field line. Jacksonville State trying to add to the lead here at the top of the second. It's just a fastball up in the zone, and Chase Robinson goes up there and gets it. A little soft liner, per plays perfectly just inside the line, and that's a first to third. Double right there, nice throw, keeping him at third base. First hit of the weekend for Chase Robinson, just his second at bat. He was 0 for 1, drawing the start today, and pays off early for Jim Case for putting Robinson in the lineup as the right fielder. And now Trey Kirkland looking for a two-out base hit. He lifts it to left. That one's pretty well hit. Hall on the run. That ball is gone. Big second inning for the Gamecocks. Seventh long ball of the year for Trey Kirkland. The Jacksonville State Gamecocks up four to nothing on Clemson. Trey Kirkland said, base hit. I'm looking to lean back on one of these balls. Jumps on that first pitch. That's Breaking a base ball. hit, though, right? Yeah, he still counts a base hit, but he said, I'm going to lean on it. Driving it to the bullpen, a little hanging, I'm banging him. Gamecock came out of the dugout there, fired up. Fourth hit of the regional for Jacksonville State, or for uh, Trey Kirkland of Jacksonville State. I want to go back to remember we talked about that ball where Grayson Bird dove, made the stop, wasn't able to get that lead runner and possible double play because of the base running from Isaac Alexander. Now we're 4 nothing. You know, it's just a simple baseball play of knowing where to run so the guy can't throw, all of a sudden it's opened up a huge inning. Chopper to third. Frederick is thrown out by Hawkins. We're watching the NCAA Regionals presented by Capital One. Jacksonville State strikes for four in the top of the second inning. An elimination game. The winner of this one will meet Ole Miss tonight, 8 o'clock local time. A little bit of a late start. Expect another big crowd with Ole Miss on the field. Rebels trying to sweep through the Oxford Regional and advance to their sixth Super Regional all time. Kyle Wilkie, Briar Hawkins, Sam Hall. First three hitters in the second inning for the Clemson Tigers. Dylan Hathcock now with a four run lead to work with. Boy, it makes it a lot easier to pitch when that offense puts up a four spot. Fill up the zone, right? Absolutely. Puts the pressure on the Clemson hitters. You know, you're, you're already tight knowing this could be the last game of the season. Now you're down 4 nothing early. Biggest thing, though, if you're on, you know, in the Clemson dugout, you've got to be able to relax. You can't think of it like that, but it's hard not to. This is the type of offense that can put up a four spot as well. Tennessee wins six to five in ten innings over Liberty, so the Volunteers stave off elimination. Liberty's fl uh, Liberty Flame season comes to an end. Pop down the right field line. Robinson got close, but didn't get there to make the catch. 
He didn't have to work very hard for that. No. I think the ball girl's got to move that chair. She took off running, but left her chair right in front of Robinson. You're right. Like I said, we've mentioned that a couple of times. A little different in the, when the Ole Miss Rebels are not here getting that foul ball. Don't have to fight many guys. All in two strikes to Kyle Wilkie. working for Wilkie. These are two teams that get it done with the long ball. Jacksonville State, 76 home runs coming into this game. They hit their 77th with Trey Kirkland going deep early. 81 on the year for Clemson. Felt like a day where we might see some offense in the first game. Well, they've talked about just the park here. Plays big. I mean, plays big at night, but during the day, the ball will jump. This ball carries all the way into the bullpen. A solo home run for Kyle Wilkie. Case in point. Sixth of the year for Wilkie, and Clemson is on the board. As you were saying? Yeah, when they say jump, I don't think they mean jet stream. That ball was popped up. I mean, you watch the... You watch uh, Chase Robinson's route to get that ball. Looks like he, he thinks he's got a beat on it. And it just kept carrying, kept carrying. Good swing on it by Wilkie. Puts a nice, stays back on that ball. Watch him come through it. But look, off the bat, the launch angle, like, that's a pop fly. And he's like, no, sir, no, sir. Look, Robinson's like, whoa, where's it going? Homer. First pitch misses for ball one to Briar Hawkins. You mentioned good AB, fouled off a couple good pitches. Was rewarded for that. Clemson's going to win this game. They're going to have to have some production from the bottom of their lineup. Five, six, seven, eight, nine in the batting order for the weekend has gone two for 34. Two singles. So nothing. <laughs> Very little. Very little. Hawkins takes a strike there. He's 0 for 5 on the weekend. Drew the start as the DH yesterday. You mentioned launch angle a second ago. I, you know, I don't have a protractor out or anything, and it's, that wasn't a great math guy. It's like a, like a seventy-five percent launch angle that, coming that, off the bat. That there. looked like off the bat from that side. Seventy-five view. degree. What was yeah, I yeah, say? What percent. am I talking about? That's all right. That looked like that looked like a foul ball into the stands the way it left the bat, and then all of a sudden it's it somehow stayed fair and is in the bullpen, and really ended up staying fair by ten or twelve feet. Just misses to Hawkins. Top four in the lineup. Pretty good. Eight driven in, ten runs scored, three long balls. But have those guys five through nine. You're right. They do need some production because, I mean, those guys are getting on base really good. Got to have somebody some help. This ball's lined into the right center field gap. That one hops the wall. There's a base hit for somebody not in the top four spots in the order. Biggest thing about it, two extra bases. You said two singles. Well, I mentioned, I said, this is an offense that the four runs is still early. They have seven, eight at bats left. They can do it. I mean, they have a lot of pop in it. You mentioned the 81 home runs, and this is a great start right here by Hawkins getting a double with no outs. Jim Case will come out and talk to his pitcher, Dylan Hathcock. The home run by Wilkie was the fourth home run allowed this year by Hathcock. He's also now given up 10 doubles this season. ESPN Networks bring you every game on the road to Omaha. You've had it all this weekend with regional coverage on ESPN2, ESPNU, SEC Network, and ESPN3. Whip around coverage available through ESPN3 and the bases loaded channel. All coverage available on the ESPN app. National seeds facing elimination today. UCLA trailing Baylor right now. Georgia Tech with a one-run lead over Coastal. 
Georgia won earlier today. They'll meet Florida State tonight. Got to beat the Seminoles twice. Louisville leading over Indiana. East Carolina will play later today. They're really just in a day two of the Greenville Regional. Stanford and Sac State coming up later in West Virginia in a weather delay right now with Texas A&M. Well, you mentioned that Georgia game, 13-0. How about Tim Elliott? Complete game, two-hitter, eight punch-outs, no walks, faced one over the minimum. That's what you need when you when all of a sudden you're in that loser's bracket and you got to come through with a lot of – a lot of innings to soak up from that pitching staff. You need a guy like that. The 13 to nothing win for Georgia improved the Bulldogs to 17 and one all time in NCAA tournament elimination games in Athens. The one was a year ago. Shallow fly ball to center, easy for Kirkland. First out of the inning. I think that's still on their minds. I think that's pretty fresh. Aaron Schunk, two for four, six RBIs, had two home runs today. Grand slam. First career grand slam. Was it? Yeah. He's a guy kind of like Bird, really hot, a lot of home runs in the last 10, 15 ball games. Should we tell the secret or no? Tell me the secret first. I mean, do you. Do, should, should we tell people that this all this information is just stored away in our heads, or should we tip our caps to Jeremy Mills and the job that they do at ESPN <laughs> Stats and Research? Definitely have to tip the caps. Jordan Green. No subliminal messages from him. He tells you exactly what he's thinking. With a little writing on his uh, his left arm. Yesterday, it was carpe diem. He was seizing the day. Today, just bringing out the boomstick. Jordan Green needs the boomstick. He has not gotten a hit so far. See if he can change it right here against Dylan Hathcock. Tennessee advancing. They've got to beat North Carolina twice if they want to get out of the Chapel Hill Regional. But Tennessee playing in its first postseason since 2005. They went to the College World Series in 2005. Have not made a regional since. And in their first trip back to the postseason, they are playing in a regional final. Two strikes to Jordan Green. Briar Hawkins out at second base. Solo home run from Kyle Wilkie. Drove one the opposite way into the right field bullpen. To start the inning, Briar Hawkins followed it up with a double. Sam Hall flew out to center, and now Jordan Green. Four long balls on the year. Chops it to third. Gaddis. A little tall on the throw, but no trouble for Strachan. And they're two down. I thought that was a nice play by Gaddis. Watch him look the runner back. So he looks at one, then he's like, no, no, no. you got to go all the way back to the bag. Briar Hawkins, because at that first little look, he almost pumped like, I'm ready for, to time that throw to get to third base. And you know, you say, hey, two outs, he's in scoring position. But you could score on a wild pitch, a pass ball, a little bit of other things. So that was a nice job by Gaddis to really get the guy's shoulders turned going back to second base. Here's Justin Hawkins. Takes ball one.
Chopper foul down the third baseline. Caddis has been busy over there. He might want to go back behind the plate. He caught the first game, and then they brought in Alex Webb. They, they kind of trade off, trade off. But to me, this is their best defensive lineup. But after all this work, he said, I might want to go put on the tools of ignorance. <laughs> the tools <laughs> He's of like ignorance. That. It's pretty good. Catcher's a special guy, man. Those guys get beat up. No one even knows about it. Two and one. That's my favorite spot growing up. I didn't play baseball past, I guess, my sophomore year in high school. But from the time I was, I don't know, eight or nine up until about 15, 16, that was my spot. Nice. Not for me, man. They'd start to swing. I'd close those eyes. I'm like, Coach, this is not happening anymore. I can't see the ball when I close my eyes. Oh, good take. Laid off the off speed. Three and one now to Justin Hawkins. He's batting in the eight hole. One for seven on the weekend. He's got a walk and struck out three times. Trying to pick up Briar Hawkins out at second base. I always liked it because you were involved in every single play of the game. That's why I like to pitch. <laughs> that was the same thing. I, I just, I like that yeah, game. Yeah, but you only get to do that like once every four or That's five true. days. That's true. You're right. But, man, I'm, I'm glad I, I can still walk right now <laughs> at age 38 because I didn't have to catch. You always do hear the fastest way to the big leagues. Well, be a switch hitting catcher. What's that? Be a switch hitting catcher. Switch, oh, yeah. <laughs> switch hitting catcher or a left-handed hitting catcher. At there you go. At least be able to hit from the left side. Full count, two down. Good at bat for Justin Hawkins. Draws the walk, second of the regional for Hawkins. And now go to the nine hole, Bryce Teodosio. Got one hit on the weekend, and Teodosio's got some pop in his bat. Nine home runs this year out of the nine hole. Yeah, not your typical nine-hole hitter that you're thinking, all right, I'm going to challenge this guy, go right at him. He's a guy that could tie this ball game up with one good swing. Well, and how about the frame? I mean, you know, certainly not Keith Law. I don't think either of us are claiming to be that. But you kind of look about projectability. 6'4", 225, good defensive outfielder, big arm. And some pop in the bat. Can run, eight for 12 stolen bases as well. You gotta be better than 213 if you're gonna play in the outfield. Right, but I mean, you see guys, I mean, think about a guy like Jonathan India. Sophomore year, hit like around 250, 260, and all of a sudden blows up, hits 360, produces some power, and goes from, you know, a, a draftable prospect late, and then, you know, what, jumped into fifth, overall? fifth or sixth overall. So, I mean, those kind of things happen. Guys figure it out over the course of a summer, whether it's, you know, going play some summer ball or just something what it is. You know, one game it'll click and, you know, a guy, a coach teaches them, hey, look, I think about it, let's do this. Because sometimes it takes a player to struggle to be a little bit more coachable, to be willing to change. Theodosio lines it past the second baseman, Frederick. Hawkins hits third, comes around to score. Hawkins goes first to third, different Hawkins. Briar Hawkins comes around to score. Justin Hawkins first to third. An RBI single for Teodosio, and it's now a 4-2 game. Well, he puts together some more swings just like this. I mean, look, stays on the ball, doesn't try to do too much. A little liner up the middle. Put more swings like that, you're going to hit a lot higher. Like I was saying, I mean, you have guys that, you know, for the most part, you've been the best player, one of the best players on your high school team, summer ball team. You get to college, and then all of a sudden, like, that's if that's when the first time a guy's really struggled, you know, he hasn't been able to have to be coached. Now you're a little bit more susceptible to coaching when you are hitting 212, 213, and those type of numbers. Green, ground ball left side, backhanded by Alexander, gets to second just in time to get the out. Well, that's a heads-up play because I don't think Alexander was going to be able to throw it across to first. You're right, Richard. Alexander, once he goes to the knees, there's no way he's going to be able to pick up Michael Green, but Cole Frederick there just in time. Top of the third inning. 
an offensive second inning. Jacksonville State, four in the top of the second. Clemson answered with a couple in the bottom half. Keep up with all the regional action that's going on, plus interactive brackets at NCAA.com. So roller to first, easy play for Grayson Bird. And Cole Frederick, actually Webb rather, rounds out to start the third. Get you one, Nick Gaddis. This was yesterday. Got Jacksonville State on the board. Followed it up with a two-run shot from Strachan and added three runs in the eighth inning. Jacksonville State getting their first ever NCAA regional win. That was one of those that was like, the team didn't believe anything. I mean, they had a couple runs against Ole Miss, but losing 16-2, to two, you kind of forget about it was. And then all of a sudden, through six innings, they were getting stifled. And you bring up your guy, your captain-type guy, and everybody's looking to it. And if he doesn't get the big hit, and all of a sudden he does it, man, right there, they erupted right after that swing. Got a little bug going around. The ejection bug. I don't know where you were going with that. Pop up. And the second baseman. Green able to make the catch. Two quick outs for Clemson. And Brooks Crawford here in the third inning. Pitching coach for Coastal Carolina got run in the Atlanta Regional. And Ken Langford, the home plate umpire in the Louisville Regional, just tossed Louisville's pitcher. 2-2 pitch, ran in just a little bit. Called ball three, got a long stare down. Maybe a little something was said. The mouth moved a little bit, but not what you want to do when it's a 9-7 game in the top of the ninth. But he made a, you got mean, sent him to the house. Tying run at the plate. This ball lifted in the left, a base hit for Isaac Alexander. Two-out single. For Alexander in the five hole for Jacksonville State. Yeah, how about that tying run at the plate, 2-2, two, two, two outs in the ninth, and you get tossed. Hope that doesn't backfire for the Cardinals. Mm. Louisville has to go to the bullpen. They get an out to finish the ball game, and Louisville advances to an elimination game. Indiana, the second Big Ten team eliminated. Second, it was a two seed. Also, we had Illinois here in Oxford. You got two three seeds and a four seed from the Big Ten that are still alive. Nebraska and Michigan, the threes, and Ohio State, the four. Strachan had a home run yesterday. Takes it away for ball two. Two balls and no strikes. Brooks Crawford, after a couple of quick outs, gives up a single to Isaac Alexander. Jacksonville State's got four two-out hits in the game that have led to four runs. Three-run blast and an RBI double. Dug himself of a hole, a hole all of a sudden after the two-out single. He's 3-0 on Strachan with Andrew Naismith waiting on deck. There's a strike, 91-mile-an-hour fastball. Oh, 
Full count. Runner goes. Popped up. Green again trying to run one down, this time in foul territory. Well, he's made those look easy twice. Yeah, back-to-back -back plays just like that. Base hit, but nothing else for Jacksonville State. Clemson able to get a shutdown inning after giving up four in the top of the second. They scored two in the bottom of the second. And put a zero on the board with Jacksonville State at the plate in the top of the third. Clemson trying to chip away at the Gamecocks lead. Two, three, and four hitters coming to the plate. Logan Davidson, Grayson Bird, and Kyle Wilkie. This is the meat of the lineup, heart of the lineup for the Clemson Tigers. Davidson has just one hit on the weekend. Logan Davidson for Clemson would love to still be playing baseball tomorrow. If he's doing that, that means that Clemson comes back and wins this game. And they beat Ole Miss in the game tonight and then they're playing tomorrow night. If that happens, possibility exists that Logan Davidson's name will be called in the first round of the MLB draft while he is playing a baseball game. Which is, by the way, an altogether different conversation about when the draft is held and when it should be held. He's projected as a first rounder though, as a shortstop. Well, I understand why you think that, because you're like, you want guys when they're playing some of their most meaningful games of their college careers and what could be a college career that's going to be ending you want them to have the ultimate focus on the team and in talking with coach lee as he goes down chases a fastball a nice block by webb but talking with coach lee he said for the most part this whole year hasn't been that much of an issue he said, we just really don't talk about it he doesn't like to talk about it either grayson bird grounded out his first time up friday afternoon Grayson Bird went down and got one. Sent it over the right field wall. Home run for Grayson Bird. That was his 16th of the year. His first pitch high for ball one. See a couple of the from the knee home runs in regional play this weekend. Grayson Bird had one. It was Gidry with Southern Miss you showed me yesterday with the grand slam. From his knee. Ball catcher's dropping down, gonna block a gonna block a nice Zach Hess slider in the dirt, and he golfs a grand slam in Alex Box. Boy, Adrian Beltre, he used to do that so good and so often. You talk about power for hitters generally being generated legs, hips. When a guy hits the ball out of the ballpark from his knee, there's some pretty serious upper body strength and some bat speed, <laughs> yeah, too. Yeah, the, the forearms, the bat speed, you're right. That's what it takes. Three and one now to Bird. Two home runs in this game. We've had 12 home runs hit in the Oxford Regional. That's the second most out of any of the 16 regional sites. 24 in Athens. I don't know if that includes the ones that were hit in the game today or not. Five-pitch walk to Grayson Bird. One-out base runner. First walk of the weekend for Bird. How about the regional that this guy's had? Kyle Wilkie coming to the plate for Clemson. He has gone six for ten with a double, a home run, and four runs batted in. Shallow center dropping fast, and that's going to fall in for a base hit. Bird scrambles to second, seventh hit of the regional for Kyle Wilkie. That was not the hardest hit of the seven, but, but it does the job. See, 
Grayson Bird kind of going halfway, then nice deke right there. He's kind of played out. That's thought it was what nice base runner there. You play it thinking, see if it's going to be down. Kirkland throws up the glove thinking, hey, like I'm going to catch it. But I think the deke was a little bit too late. He throws it up there earlier. Might have been able to have fr frozen Grayson Bird halfway and man, we get that lead out. This ball rifled into left field by Briar Hawkins. First pitch he saw. That's a one hopper to Adams, and Clemson has the bases loaded in the third. One out walk to Grayson Bird. Kyle Wilkie bloops one into center field, and then a hot shot by Hawkins into left. Talking elimination game, you thinking Lisa's going to be short. Jacksonville State's got nobody in the bullpen. Clemson's got a bunch of guys just kind of hanging out, sitting around. Crawford looks like he settled in after that tough second inning, but right now this looks like Hathcock's game. Base is full of Tigers. Sam Hall takes strike one. He flew out to center his first time up. Hall 0 for 5 for the regional. This ball line to third. Gaddis climbs the ladder, throws to second for the double play. Wow, Nick Gaddis skies, climbs the ladder, catches the line drive, and watch the heads up play. Huge hit to open up the game yesterday. Nice defensive play today. Jacksonville State leading 4-2 after three over Clemson in an elimination game in the Oxford Regional. Winner will meet Ole Miss tonight. Here's a peek at the Atlanta Regional. Georgia Tech and Auburn will play tonight at 6 Eastern after Georgia Tech comes from behind to win 10-8. to eight. That's after the gut punch they had last night. Georgia Tech, full count, two outs, bottom of the ninth as the visiting team thought they were about to slide into that 2-0 and o spot, the Catbird seat, and had Auburn walk them off. And so instead, Georgia Tech will have to beat Auburn twice. Andrew Naismith leads off the inning, pops it a mile into the air. Teodosio, the center fielder, calls off Davidson and Jordan Green. Let's say Davidson called it first. You're talking about priority <laughs> drills. Davidson, the shortstop, he's got priority over all the infielders. Well, the wind kind of takes it more. Jordan Green says, no, I got it. Ultimate priority, Teodosio from the outfield. He takes it. And Jordan Green didn't like that. He looked at Teodosio. He said, do you see where my spot is and how close I am? Yeah, but you always have the guy coming forward. He's the, always the, the top guy in priority. This ball, a little soft liner to Jordan Green. See, now it's his turn. Two down. We will visit with Jim Case as we head to the bottom of the fourth inning. Jim Case with his first postseason win as a head coach at Jacksonville State yesterday. Busy guy. Coach's third base. Calls all the pitches. And it's going to take a little bit of time to give us a little interview, right? A little bit. Questions better be quick and to the point. <laughs> yeah. He's got work to do. But hey, hey, he's a professional. He's up there talking, throwing the signs to the catcher, giving him the, the numbers. Not missing a beat. Chase Robinson 
Doubled down the right field line his first time up. Oxford Regional is paired with the Fayetteville Regional. Arkansas won 3-1 yesterday over TCU to move to 2-0 in the regional. TCU and Central Connecticut State are playing in Fayetteville right now. TCU with an early 2-1 lead. But somebody's going to have to beat Arkansas twice to knock the Razorbacks out. And they're going to have to do that in front of 9, 10, 11, 12,000 12, yeah, people at Ball Walker going. Stadium in Fayetteville. Knocked up third base side. This one will drift out of play. Arkansas got it started with a win. Cal Bears went two and out. Arkansas's Isaiah Campbell outdueled Nick Lodolo from TCU yesterday. So TCU now in the elimination game. Think of those scouts. See how many scouts you saw at that game. Mm. Mr. Campbell up his stock. Two out walk from Crawford. Second walk by Crawford today. He's got a couple of strikeouts. Trey Kirkland looking for a two-out base hit. He did more than that. Drove it over the left field wall into the bullpen. Three-run blast. That gave Jacksonville State a 4-0 lead. This time wants to bunt his way on, and it spins foul. That's a heads-up play by Wilkie. Boy, yeah, you're right. Heads up it is. I mean, that's a base hit, no doubt. I mean, he looks like, to me, like he looked like he was right about to touch, right about to touch it. Last second, he sees the spin. That's just recognizing the spin going, I can't make a play anyway. About that, though. Choked up on the edge of the bat. Three-run home run into the bullpen. Next pitch, trying to lay it on a bunt. Showing all the skills. Kirkland has four hits in the regional. One for two in this game with a three-run homer. So that matchup had MLB.com's number eight prospect and number 45 prospect pitching against each other. I bet there were 45, 50 scouts in stands, or scouts, GM type brass. Mr. Campbell sitting at 45 might have improved himself a little bit. There's always some of those guys that catch fire. They pitch against the right guys. The scouts are watching the other guy, or they might be there watching that big hitter, which you had one of the best hitters in all the country, Andrew Vaughn, in that regional as well. You get to show, wow, you put together a good run of three or four ball games in the postseason and get your name called. Is there any work left to do for scouts at this point? Still, I mean, you'll, you'll still see guys move up. You, know, you might be you might be teetering on, hey, I like this guy, but I like this guy. I don't know what you think, and especially the organization. And, you know, the GM's like, well, I'll be there to watch. Or, you know, one of the big national cross-checkers goes there, and he sees the right game at the right time. They decide to take you over the next guy. Maybe you go ninth instead of 14th, and you get $300,000 more. Or whatever the difference in those two picks is. I mean, you have a guy that you know, a lot of teams might see you as the second rounder, and then you have that one GM or one you know top guy that goes and sees you that day, and he's like, he's not going to last to us in the second round. We've got to jump up, get him in the first round, and sure enough, you make a couple extra bucks. About $800,000 difference between number nine and number 13 can be big. Two run lead for Jacksonville State over Clemson as we go to the bottom of the fourth inning, four to two ball game. Jim Case joins us, head coach, coming off his first ever postseason win as the head coach of Jacksonville State yesterday. And 
That's all nice and good, Coach, but now it's about trying to win another one and another one after that. You get off to a pretty good start today offensively. Yeah, well, what we did was we were able to extend that inning with two outs, and, and those are always uh, really good when you're on offense and bad when you're on defense, and we were able to put up a four spot with two outs. Well, Coach, with a big hit yesterday, an unbelievable play this last inning, what has Nick Gaddis meant to your program the last four years? Well, he's our leader. I mean, that's what he is. And, you know, the guys call him captain, and he is the captain. We don't have a, a bona fide captain, but if we have one, he would definitely be it. Uh, he's been impressive this weekend. Coach, thanks so much for your time. Thank you. Jim Case, it's the 18th season as the head coach of the Jacksonville State Gamecocks. Won the OVC regular season and the conference tournament to get the automatic bid into regional play. Jordan Green. Looking for his first hit of the regional. He has played a good second base for Clemson this weekend. I was just about to say, as it was, that inning was over, I said he's pretty much got that fly ball stuffed out. He's caught him a bunch of different ways running. And, he, and that ball goes in the air. He wants it. outside. We can see Heath Hathcock's face right there. He really thought he made that pitch. I thought he did too. Alex Webb did too. The catcher pops out of his crouch. Jordan Green's dad was a football player. Defensive back at Wake Forest. And Green draws the walk. Big off man on base. Talked earlier in the game about the need for some production out of the bottom part of the order. So five through nine today for Clemson. You've got Bryce Hawkins two for two. Jordan Green's been on base once with a walk. Justin Hawkins has been on base once with a walk. And Bryce Teodosio had an RBI single. They're getting a little bit more out of the bottom part of the order today. They hurt us. Fired him up. Might have heard their head coach also. <laughs> That's true. I guess is he brought that up somewhere along the way. Justin Hawkins makes strike one. We did see Coach Lee animated in a team meeting in the middle of the game yesterday. Came out, thought they had a little bit better approach. But man, that, that Doug Nikhazy was so good yesterday. It was tough to get to shut down most lineups with the stuff that he brought. Justin Hawkins has started the last 23 games for Clemson. Had a grand slam against Duke back in late April. One of his four home runs all the year. Dylan Hathcock, 3-0 on the year, an ERA of 4.01 coming into today. He's given up five hits, has allowed two runs. 
Keeps an eye on Jordan Green over at first. Green's run some, not a ton this year, five out of six. And steals this season. This ball lifted to right center, tailing away from Kirkland, and he'll be able to run it down, no trouble in the gap, one away. throwing 10 of 37 out. Probably not a good time to run. Especially earlier. Early with no outs, maybe something with two outs. First action of the bullpen for either team is happening down in the left field corner for Jacksonville State. First pitch strike to Bryce Teodosio in the nine hole. Line one into right center, drove in a run in his first at bat of the ball game. It was his second hit of the regional. Sixty-fifth pitch of the game. Bounces in from Dylan Hathcock. Corley Woods, the right hander, throwing in the bullpen for Jacksonville State. Saw Woods yesterday. <laughs> Corley Woods has been one of their go-to guys. 6-0 and oh out of the bullpen with a 2-4. <laughs> Swing and a miss there from Teodosio. Behind in the count now of all and two strikes. Again, Teodosio stays alive. Sophomore from Simpsonville, South Carolina. For his career, hitting 199. Numbers are up this year with the nine home runs, the 32 runs batted in. Actually picked up his 33rd RBI. All in the dirt. Green thought about going, and nobody told Webb that he didn't take off. He went ahead and fired it down to second. I like Green that. was scrambling back to first. I like that heads-up play. It just, just, just making sure. You know, a lot of times if you take that chance to look up and see, you you might be that split second too late. So Webb pops up, like you said, and just throws it. on the base pass right here. Just inside, full count now to Teodosio. So it's like a spot where you put the runner in motion with one out? It, it has that feeling. Teodosio is putting some good swings on, had a nice swing in his, at that earlier, and so fouled off some good pitches, taking some close ones. If you trust your guy, he's not going to punch out. The situation though, as a base runner with a lefty, the hit and run's a little tougher. You can't go first movement, so you got to wait till that arm crosses the face. And see, as as he lifts his legs, you basically just have to freeze, and then as the arm crosses the face, then you take off. Does not take off with the pitch. There's some teams that'll do that a lot. I mean, obviously everybody full count two outs is is putting the. There you go around in motion, put the base runners in motion. But there are a lot of coaches that don't like to take that risk of full count with just one out trying to get that jump start because of the possibility of a double play. I like it. I, I like to, to put pressure on the defense. There he goes. Chopper foul. So, I mean, you're thinking as a pitcher, you know, the, the one thing that you, if it's a guy that likes to slide step, then it's no big deal. But if it's a guy that doesn't really slide step very much, and now you've got in his mind, like, i got to be quicker to the plate, i got to be quicker to the plate, I don't want him to steal, 
And so then now, instead of worried about making the pitch, I'm worried about being quicker to the plate. And so that's something where, I, as a base runner and an offense, I really like to think like that to be able to put pressure on that pitcher. But it's a little bit tougher, like I mentioned, with the left-hander. Full count coming this time. Green does not go. Pitch runs inside. Ball four. A 10-pitch at bat results in a walk for Teodosio. Michael Green coming to the plate on Friday. Green notched his third home run of the season. Went the opposite way. Got it up. Wind helped a little bit. Drove it over the left center field wall. And Michael Green. A little bit to celebrate in an 8-4 win. Jim Case out to talk to Dylan Hathcock. That home run looked a little bit like Kyle Wilkie's. Ball popped up and just, just kept going and going. That's what this Clemson team does. They hit home runs. They have all season long. 81 coming into this ball game. They've added another today, so 82 home runs on the year. Monty Lee, as long as his tree, uh, team trails by a couple, looking for a base hit. We'll talk with Monty Lee. We come back to the top of the fifth inning. Two walks in the inning. Jordan Green at second base. Bryce Teodosio at first. Wrapped around a fly ball to center by Justin Hawkins. Swing and a miss. Big cut by Michael Green. Coming into the regional, Green had hit safely in 11 straight games. Had a hit on Friday, had one yesterday as well. Four hits on the weekend, a 13-game hitting streak for the right fielder for Clemson. Chops this one foul. I think Hathcock knows this might be his last guy. You know, being a left on left matchup, Davidson being the switch hitter on deck. If he's able to get him out without some extra damage, moving runners over, he might get another chance because then you get a chance to face Bird as a left on left. Two and two now to Michael Green. Two two. Full count now, and Dylan Hathcock in danger of walking the bases loaded. Three and a third, five hits, two earned runs allowed, four walks, two strikeouts in the game for Dylan Hathcock. Jordan Green at second, Bryce Teodosio at first. Big spot, runners go. Ground ball, chance for two, four, six, three, double play. Hathcock couldn't have drawn it up any better. 
I'm about to talk about making a pitch when you need to. Absolutely beautiful right here. Runners in motion, Frederick to Alexander, and the th strong throw finishes it off. Four, six, three. Jacksonville State with a two-run lead over Clemson, 4-2 as we go to the top of the fifth inning in the Oxford Regional Elimination Game. The Clemson dugout joined by Monty Lee, the head coach. Coach, we talked some earlier today about the fact that you needed probably some more production from the bottom of your lineup, and you've gotten that today. You've been able to get guys on base in those five through nine spots. Yeah, we really have. I mean, we, we've had some good at-bats. I mean, the big thing is that base is loaded, lined out to third base and got doubled up. Got to do a better job of base running there, and then – you know, hit two balls hard right there in the last inning uh, with two walks, uh, but just haven't been able to get anything to show for our last two innings. We've been hitting the ball hard, putting together good at-bats. we just got to come up with that big hit with runners in scoring position. Well, Coach, what's your thoughts on, on Crawford right here? Is the senior getting his first – kind of getting back into rotation, but he's got some good postseason success. You know, he's throwing the ball fine. I mean, we had the two outs where, you know, they hit, they went hit, hit, three-run homer, and, you know, he had some tough luck right there. But, you know, outside of that, he's been fine. We just got to find a way to score some runs behind him. Coach, thanks for your time. Yep, thank you. Monty Lee, back-to-back -back base hits for Jacksonville State as Cole Frederick leads the inning off with a single to left, and then Alex Webb goes the opposite way as well. That's not going to make Coach Lee happy. Puts on the headset, two laser beams. Feels like the scoring is not done in this game, likely for either of these teams. When you consistently get guys on base, I feel like you're going to have a chance to get some runs, but you do have to come up with that big hit that Monty Lee was talking about. And Jacksonville State team's playing with some confidence and looks like they're having a whole lot of fun right now. Yeah, I think that's the biggest thing is having fun. You know, it's, it, it did not look like that the first, what, nine innings, and they went first 15 innings of the tournament, had two runs, and it was a game where they had lost 16-2. to two. They weren't having fun. Then all of a sudden, the right guy comes up. Coach Case talked about, you know, they, they call him the captain. He comes up gets a huge hit. The guy that's strolling up to the plate right now. So, I mean, once you, you, you light the fire, and all of a sudden that can happen. See what Brooks Crawford has done today. Here's Nick Gaddis, dangerous hitter. Gaddis 0 for 2 in this game with a strikeout and a pop out. I feel pretty confident in saying that Gaddis is not going to be sacrificed bunting here. Although you do get the spin to second just to check. That's almost like the – that's almost a, that's a guarantee. <laughs> Two guys on, nobody out. Uh, inside move, let's just see you bunch. And as a hitter, you're taught don't show it, don't show it. So, I mean, pitchers do it, and it doesn't really matter anymore. In 223 at-bats this year, Nick Gaddis has a grand total of zero sacrifice hits. Owen Griffith and Jacob Hennessy. In the bullpen, Hennessy started game one. It's Owen Griffith that is coming into the game. So a pitching change for the Clemson Tigers. Back-to-back -back singles to start the inning for Jacksonville State. And we will see a new purple jersey on the mound. Pitching change will take a timeout. Gamecocks up a pair. Owen Griffith, the junior from Aiken, South Carolina, 6'1", 195 pounds. Second time he has pitched this weekend. Griffith is 2-2 two two on the year. ERA of about 5.5, 24th appearance of the season. 41 strikeouts, 21 walks, right at a 2-1 to one strikeout to walk ratio this season. And Clemson needs somebody that can go out and try and put up some zeros. You're yeah. in an elimination game. You don't have a lot of margin for error. Yeah, he either needs a big strikeout or a ground ball. Clemson's hit into six double plays from their side of it. They need to turn one on their own right now. 
Cole Frederick led the inning off with a single to left field. First pitch he saw. And then Alex Webb followed it up with a single. First and second, nobody out. First pitch to Nick Gaddis is a strike. Gotten better and better for Nick Gaddis at the plate since his freshman season. From one to four, now back-to-back double-digit home run seasons. Breaking ball to nip the show and nip the arm. Yes, so no hesitation there from Gaddis. Base is loaded, nobody out, and Clemson's in a mess. in. Bird and Hawkins, first and third, are going to look to go home. Or Hawkins will go whatever way that ball takes him. Chop foul by Isaac Alexander. Yeah, when you bring the third baseman in, if that ball takes him to the bag, you'll probably see him step on the bag, go across the diamond. If it takes him the other way, the second, he'll turn to Jordan Green, the 5-4-3, and if it's just right at him, he'll come home. Decision-making process has to happen quick. That one's blocked nicely by Wilkie. Kind of a do-or-die block yeah, up there for Kyle Wilkie. Better sell out. He did. We've seen some good catching. Cooper Johnson, Wilkie. Cordy threw some, had some nice caught stealings for Illinois. Chopper to short. They get the out at second base, but that's the only out. Just not enough on that ball. Cole Frederick comes home to score. Webb goes to third. And Alexander reaches on the fielder's choice. Now five to two. Alex Strachan, no stranger to the long ball this weekend. Yesterday, a little oppo shot. Sends it over the right center field wall. Two-run Jack. Jacksonville State now with a three-run lead, top of the fifth inning. Digit home runs. Strachan hit his 11th yesterday. Strachan and Gaddis, the only two for Jacksonville State that have got double digit home runs this season. Strikes. Owen Griffith came in, got a ground ball. It was a softly hit ground ball, though, so it allowed a run to score, and they only got one out. But still, a ground ball to the middle of the infielders gives you the chance to get out of this inning with no more damage. That's best case scenario for Clemson. Velocity from Griffith, 93 mile an hour fastball there. Yeah, you're about to see what he believes is his best strikeout pitch. 2-2, two, two, one out, man on third base. Got to be able to get that strikeout. Cool. What a take right there. <laughs> Golly, that ball. 
I mean, that's that's over the plate. Looked like it broke from his letters to his shoe tops. Griffith was the top-rated pitcher in the state of South Carolina coming out of high school. A junior now. Big spot here with a full count and one out to a guy with home run power. Stratton chased one up a little bit, fouled it away. Pitch stays up, bases loaded once again. Alexander down at second. Stretch and walks, and Andrew Naismith comes to the plate. With one out and the bases loaded, a three-run lead for Jacksonville State. A base hit here that scores a couple of runs or possibly clears the base feels like it would be massive for the Gamecocks. A. Smith was the guy yesterday after that big four-run inning that tied it up against Illinois. They had given up the lead right in the next inning, and Naismith came up huge with a two-run double. It put Jacksonville up for good. Webb at third, Alexander at second, Strachan at first. And a first pitch ball to Andrew Naismith. Monty Lee out of the dugout. He may be making a change already. He's got Hennessy, the lefty, up and throwing, was the game one starter, and also the right-hander, Carson Spires. We had pointed to Wilkie earlier, right before that at bat, to go talk to him, try to waste some time. And you're talking... Your best bullpen arm, Carson Spires, hasn't been in a game, and your season now is on the line. It could be one of those positions where you're not worried about a closer. You're trying to bring in and stop the damage. Andrew C. is the pitching coach, and when it's just a conversation, it's usually C. that goes out. When we're going to make a pitching change, it's Monty Lee, and he lifts his right hand, points to the bullpen, and I think we've got Carson Spires coming into the game. I think that's a good move. I mean, you can't leave him out there and, and, and let him waste. If you were going with the left, you'd have brought him in before that at bat, you know, with, with Naismith up there. So I think it's a smart move. We'll tell you about Spires when we come back. Jacksonville State, bases loaded, one out, leading 5-2. to two. Carson Spires, the junior from Greenville, South Carolina, the right-hander coming into the ball game, and he's coming into a difficult spot. Bases loaded, one out. His team trailing 5-2. to two. Win loss record not great this year for Spires, but the other numbers are good. So he's 2-5 and five with an ERA below 3.5. Made 29 appearances, 43 strikeouts, and just 12 walks. Yeah, he is the closer, the team captain. You think, why is the closer in? As I said, mentioned earlier, he hasn't been used in the first two games. You can't leave him out there and not use him in big situation in the game. Bulldog type of pitcher. Coming from the three, four, three quarter arm slot. Fastball is going to be in round 91, 92. Mostly fastballs, changes. Not a lot of breaking balls. Short outing for Owen Griffith. Works just a third of an inning. Carson Spires comes from a long line of Clemson baseball players and really Clemson athletes. Part of a long line, I should say. His first pitch runs inside for ball one. His uncle is Bill Spires, who went on to play 13 years in the big leagues after playing baseball at Clemson. His grandfather and his dad both played baseball at Clemson, and his cousin Will Spires, punter on the Clemson National Championship football team. Parsons' dad, Michael. 1988 to 1991 at Clemson. Carson Spires, third team all ACC, but he's delivered two balls in a row and now three in a row, and a run comes home to score. 
But he inherited a 1-0 count coming into the game. Missed with three straight pitches. Webb comes home. Everybody else moves up. Alexander to third, stretching to second. Naismith draws the walk and picks up his 35th RBI of the year. Yeah, I'm not a huge fan of bringing a guy in, especially on a disadvantage count. He knows that pressure is fully on him. It's already pressure packed when you're coming in bases loaded and then in a 1-0 count, knowing I can't, you know, I don't want to just groove one, so you're going to be a little bit more tight. Four straight balls for Spires out of the bullpen. Six has been the magic number this year for Jacksonville State. When scoring six or more runs, they are 25 and four this season. Still bases loaded with one out, Nash Adams. One for two. The guess is that whatever Jim Case's signal is for take, He's going to be using it right now. Yeah, and it may not be real subtle. He may be <laughs> jumping up and down, waving his arm, saying, don't don't swing until he throws a strike. Yeah, he's going to throw that one arm out, make the biggest tee he could possibly make. Pull the hitter back, step out, look at him. Don't swing. So this is where you got to know. you got to know this as a pitcher, right? In my mind, like... I know I'm trying to throw the ball in the outside part of the plate. Right now, that plate is middle, middle. You're thinking, if you put up a tee, I'm trying to knock that ball off the tee right now. He's not swinging. And so you're just going to go up there like everything I can. Think back. All the mechanics that you've done, all the drills that you've done, this is where you lift your leg, you trust it, and you just throw right down the middle. Runs up and away. It's 3-0. Quick conversation from pitching coach Andrew C. So six pitches from Spire since entering, and all six of them have missed. There's a strike, three and one. Too. Is there anything a pitching coach can say to you when you're struggling to find the zone that will help you throw a strike? I mean, this, sometimes it could be a certain mechanical thing, but for the most part, when those coaches walk out there, they're just trying to get your mindset off of what's happening right there, like just trying to settle you down and keep you from thinking constantly about, oh, my gosh, I've thrown six straight, seven straight. Chopper foul. Candles make a nice wedding gift. I mean, if you're doing something that is just so drastic that a coach can see, like, man, you are flying open, you have to stop, you know, stay back, all these things you're rushing, that might be something he goes out there and say. But at that point right there, you're looking at, look, base is loaded. We just need you to attack this hitter. I don't care what happens. If he swings 3-0, all good. So now a full count. And sometimes once you can find it, you can really find it. There's a pop-up on the infield. Infield fly rule. Two down. That ball was dropped, but it doesn't matter. And the infield fly rule in effect. And Ash Adams is retired. I like the gamesmanship right there by Jordan Green. Just seeing if it would work. I mean, you need, you're, you're, you're needing a big out, right? Need big double play. So knowing that you, you know, that's as an infielder, you check the umpire. He throws the hands up. All right, just making sure you got the infield fly. Bill Fisher. He, he was holding his hand above his head, pointing straight up in the air. The, but, hey, sometimes you got to – don't ever take for granted right. who knows the rules. You know, the base runner might panic. Oh, he dropped it. What do I do? What was the age you taught your kids the infield fly rule? I, I don't know, but you'd be surprised. Uh, 12, oh, 12 U baseball, that none of them really know that rule yet. My daughter and I started talking about it when she was about three. I was like, there's certain <laughs> things in life you just you need learn. to understand. So second and third are bases loaded, less than two out. Ball popped up on the infield. It's an automatic out. And the part you got to remember, to your point just a second ago, is if it's not just fielders, but, I mean, hitters got to be in the game as well because if the ball hits the ground, they can then advance at their own peril. Right. If you have a guy that panics and leaves the bag, whoops, 
Well, that was on you, not them. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. You never take for granted. Who knows what's going on? There's a strike, one and two to Chase Robinson. Spires has found something. He struggled out of the pen. First six pitches he threw, all were balls. He walked in a run when he inherited a 1-0 count. Then he was 3-0 on Nash Adams. Battled back, got a pop-up on the infield, and now he's ahead of Chase Robinson, the nine-hole hitter. The 1-2. On the ground, left side to second. Did he get his foot on the bag? What a job by Green on a throw that was a little offline from Logan Davidson. Yeah, what a huge play right here for the Clemson Tigers. Davidson, I didn't know if he'd be able to get there. Jordan Green, watch the footwork. That might be the play they need. Dude, how did he keep? Maybe the two best things you will see today. First of all, a great defensive play. Logan Davidson. Scoops it up, doesn't make the best speed. Jordan Green going to bail him out, clips the bag. All right, he got the out to get out of the inning. But now look at this. Second base umpire, Bill Fisher. Emphatic, emphatic. Rears back. Kapow! How about that? Bottom of the fifth inning. Clemson trailing by four. First pitch swinging for Logan Davidson since it passed Gaddis, the third baseman. Good start for the Tigers in the fifth. Sometimes it takes that nice defensive play, get out of a big jam. The momentum can start to swing. Baseball is such a momentum game. You know, thinking about last night, Jacksonville yesterday gets their first win. They get to go sit back, relax, and think about the game. Hey, we got our first win. Clemson had a tough game last night against Ole Miss, getting dominated by Doug Nikhazy. Pop up, shallow left, long run in for Adams. It's Alexander, the shortstop, going out that makes the catch, one away. Grayson Bird got under that one. So when you come into the ball game early today going, man, you know, I'm not saying this is why games like this happen, but momentum like that plays a role in what you're doing. But all it takes sometimes is a nice defensive play, a big hit, and it can turn it, turn it around for you. Jim K set it to the mound, perhaps to make a pitching change. Back he's going to do it. He has made the signal to the bullpen. Dylan Hathcock's day is done. Runner on first and one out in the bottom of the fifth inning. His team leading six to two. We're back to Oxford after this. The ESPN Networks bring you every game on the road to Omaha. Starting with regional coverage this weekend, it's ESPN2, ESPNU, SEC Network, and ESPN3. Whip around coverage available through ESPN3, the Bases Loaded Channel. All coverage available on the ESPN app. Orly Woods is the new pitcher in the game for Jacksonville State. He comes in with a runner on first, one out, and a 6-2 to two lead. Junior from Alexander City, Alabama, pitching for the second time this weekend. 26th appearance of the year, 6-0, and oh, ERA below 2.5. 20 strikeouts, 9 walks. And he's facing a red hot bat to start things off. Kyle Wilkie, seven for 11 in regional play this weekend. He's got a double, a home run, has driven in four, two for two in this game. Well, with him and Briar Hawkins, I mean, these are two guys you want up. Both guys perfect. Elimination game in Morgantown, West Virginia leading 9-7. They were up 9-3, but A&M's Logan Foster hit a grand slam in the bottom of the seventh inning. Aggies have the tying run at the plate with one down in the seventh. Central Connecticut State and TCU tied at four in the bottom of the fifth inning in Fayetteville. Elimination game in Los Angeles, UCLA up 9-5 on Baylor in the top of the sixth inning. And 
everything Kyle Wilkie does at the plate right now looks aggressive and looks locked in. Pops this one to left. Adams makes the catch, two down. That's a big out. Briar Hawkins also two for two in the game. Double to run scored in the second, single in the third. Davidson at first led the inning off with a single through the left side. Now 3 0 to Briar Hawkins. Richard Cross, Lance Cormier with you from the Oxford Regional, Oxford, Mississippi. Regional final coming up at 8 o'clock local time tonight. Ole Miss will meet the winner of this game. Whether it's Jacksonville State or Clemson, they will have to beat the Rebels twice as Ole Miss is the 2 0 team. Pitch walk to Hawkins. The old miss of wins over Jacksonville State and Clemson. 16 to 2 and 6 to 1 last night. Gunnar Hoagland will pitch in the game for Ole Miss. We'll see who the starter is for the winner of this game. I think either coach is worried about that right no, now. No, because I think that might be a flip of a coin to throw or pull a name out of a hat. Yeah, right now, you're looking at this inning. You got one out right here, and then four four innings after that. So, you're looking at 13 outs for the Jack State staff, 12 for Clemson. They're just worried about finishing off this game. Four and a third for Dylan Hathcock, the starter. Six hits allowed, two runs, both earned. Davidson out at second base belongs to Hathcock. There's a strike, and it's one and one now to Sam Hall. I think you look back, if you're Coach Lee, you look back on the regional, if it, you know, how this, no matter how it ends, right now you have 21 guys already left on base. We've, the last couple innings, they've had two huge double plays. He mentioned that when he was talking, but that's just a lot of missed opportunities. It hasn't been the lack of guys on base, it's just being able to get that big hit to get the guys in. This ball. Foul down the third baseline. Sam Hall out in front just a little bit. And two strikes, two down in the inning. Davidson at second, Hawkins at first. Jacksonville State with a four run lead. This one behind the head of Sam Hall. Both runners move up. Sam Hall didn't even flinch. Yeah, very rare do you see a guy, the ball that's so far behind you, you don't even move. He threw one earlier. I think it might have been his first pitch in the game, and he asked for a different ball. But watch this. He didn't even move. 
just statues. So now a base hit from Sam Hall can be big. Two runs could come around to score. Hall over to a fly out, and he lined into a double play. Lifts it to left, should be easy. Adams in his tracks, makes the catch. Clemson strands two more. That is six the Tigers have left on base today. NCAA Regional Baseball is presented by Capital One. Day three of the Oxford Regional which is paired up with the Fayetteville Regional. Arkansas will meet the winner of TCU and Central Connecticut State, who are currently tied at four. Central Connecticut State, one of three teams that yesterday won for the first time ever in an NCAA Regional. We saw it with Jacksonville State here in Oxford. Jacksonville State trying to make it two in a row. Same thing for Central Connecticut in Fayetteville. Quinnipiac was the other team. Trey Kirkland fouls it away. Yeah, the head was out right there. He just put that ball. That might have been my truck. That Boomer the Bobcat was happy after Quinnipiac's first ever postseason win yesterday. Better mascot, Boomer the Bobcat for Quinnipiac or the Camels for Campbell? Yeah, I'm going to have to go with the Fighting Camels. It's a really good mascot. Kirkland able to hold up for ball one. What, what, what do you think dictates a Camel or a Fighting Camel? Bad attitude. Okay. Armor. Ball lifted down the left field line once again. Kirkland out in front. Ball and two strikes. Weaponry. That was very nice of him right there. Grab one, find a little guy, then find a littler guy. The, first, yeah, a little the, first, guy, the first guy thought he was going to get a hey. lean, lean over. No, no, Fake not you, yeah. buddy. <laughs> This ball lined to Grayson Bird at first. Nice job by Bird. Talking about the draft earlier, and obviously Logan Davidson is a, a name that you're going to see, and some others on this Clemson team. But what about Grayson Bird? Big size, really shown the ability to, to swing it. He's played a good defensive third base, or excuse me, a defensive first base this weekend but he falls into that he's a senior category which people always talk about leverage not really being there for guys that are seniors I think you got to look pedigree obviously dad played in the big leagues 14 years absolutely so I mean guys growing up around the game well, picked up in foul territory by Gata, uh, excuse me by Hawkins Obviously, with the kind of pop that he has, he's going to be a guy that's going to get a chance. Don't know if, you know, how high the draft is going to be, but he will get a chance to play professional baseball. And then for the most part, that's all you're – I mean, obviously you want to make some money as a bonus and everything, but, you know, when it comes down to it, you just need a shot to be able to continue your playing career. Then whatever happens after that is all in your hands. If you, you know, you start producing in the minor leagues, you'll be able to – you know, you'll make your own path. Yeah, and the whole leverage thing, I mean, it's really not that it's not important because you're talking about a job and your financial livelihood and whether or not you can eat anything besides you know, processed noodles when you're in the minor leagues, I guess. <laughs> but, I mean, you're, you're talking about the initial signing bonus. I mean, that's right. Oh, man, because, yeah, this, once you get into the – that's one of the biggest misconceptions in all of – Baseball and and fans, they think you know when, oh you 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 make it, you're all this is what you're making. No, minor league players are making like a thousand dollars a month in A ball, and then like your double A, you get to be about fifteen or sixteen hundred. Triple A's around twenty two hundred. You don't make any money until you get into the big leagues, and still, 
you know, most people think, yeah, you played in the big leagues, you're a millionaire instantly. That's not true? No, not at all. Although nowadays, the minimum's at 560. Number one overall pick slot value this year with the uh, Baltimore Orioles, 8.4 million. Well, that guy's a little different. He a little is different than the 25th man on the on the roster getting called up. Swing and a miss. Cole Frederick goes down. Strikeout for Spires. Two away in the inning, so a line out and a strikeout. The last pick of the first round. Yankees have got the 30th pick before you get into the uh, comp picks. 2.365. That's if you're pick 30th. I do like how there's the slotting system where you pretty much know it's this is what it is unless, you know, you'll start to see now teams draft seniors so they can save money on a senior um, and, and be able to spend the money elsewhere to somebody else. So it doesn't necessarily mean you have to get that. It just means you shouldn't go over that. Diamondbacks have a lot of picks up there early. At least three of the top 35. Four. Alex Webb drops this one in front of Michael Green out in right field. A two-out base hit. If you're trying to build the organization, that's a good thing. If you are trying to sign guys and not having try, able uh, the success to do that, that's the reason you've got all the extra picks in the first round. That's a, a less good thing. <laughs> yeah, that's the bad thing. And you traded away a lot of good guys, or you didn't offer, you weren't able to sign some guys back. Pretty much means you're automatically in rebuilding mode. Top of the sixth inning, a 6-2 lead for Jacksonville State, trying to advance to a regional final for the first time in their program's history. You've got the number one pick overall this year. Is it Adley Rutschman for you at Oregon State? No questions asked? I, I think so. I mean, it's one of those things that you, you can build a franchise around a guy like that. Switch hitting catcher. Is a Buster Posey comparison fair? I think so. I mean, the, the, when you look at college numbers, they're really close. I think, team, I think you're going to start to see teams do a better job of, you know, teaching that guy to just not be behind the plate because, I mean, you, you have a guy like Buster Posey, I mean, as he's coming to later to the end of his career, just the, just the wear and tear, you know, I mean, Joe Maurer saw that. I mean, we thought Maurer was going to be in a move in the first base, but the wear and tear on a catcher's body throughout 162 games a year is so tough. But if you're going to invest, in, you know, a guy that's, like you mentioned, why you enjoy, you know, playing catchers, you're in the play the whole, you know, in, in every action all the time. I mean, that, that's as good a guy you can do to invest in one of those. It's kind of what makes the career of Yadier Molina so remarkable. Started playing in the big leagues in 2004, played in 51 games. He's been 100 games or more every season since 2004. And I realize that I'm kind of cherry picking maybe the best catcher in the game over the last decade. Yeah, but, I mean, that's even more impressive. He is one of the best catchers in the game, and he's playing. You look at those numbers, you got a 147, a bunch of 130. So it's not like, you know, he's he's getting, what, two games off a month? You know, when you, when you talk about it, six, you know, two or three games off a month, that's really good for somebody to be able to put up that kind of production for that long of a career. And at the age of 36, has caught 50 games this season. If you give Yadier Molina a day off, that means you are taking him out of the lineup. It's not like you're in the American League where you can say, yeah, we're going to sit him, but we're going to keep his bat in the lineup. Well, especially with a guy that, like Molina with the defensive side of it. 2-2. Two -two. And you know your team takes a hit when he, the bet, one of, you know, one of the best, if not the best defensive catchers in the game is not in the game. You know your defense is going to take a hit. So I understand why the coach would want to get to the field every day and say, Molina, catch him. Go. 
UCLA in the seventh inning of an elimination game, leading 11 to six over Baylor. Elimination game here in Oxford, top of the sixth inning, a 6-2 lead. For Jacksonville State over Clemson. Fouled off. Gaddis will sit tight. And the coolest thing to me, though, about watching Major League Baseball now, after having covered college baseball for the last handful of years, the number of guys that you've seen play in SEC stadiums and ACC stadiums on the West Coast in the Pac-12, at smaller schools even, that are getting to the big leagues faster than we've ever seen before. I agree with you on that. I, we even had a conversation earlier. Fine shot to third, handed by, handled by Hawkins. Hold that thought. We'll come back to the big league college guys conversation. 6-2 as we go to the bottom of the sixth. Welcome everyone to Omaha, Nebraska, home of the College World Series. That's one way to get it started. He got him. Gets one to hit, drives it to right. This one is gone. And the Beavers are on top of the college baseball world. College World Series begins on Saturday, June 15th. It's just 13 days away. Two weeks from yesterday for the opening round. Most College World Series appearances by conference since we went to 64 teams back in 1999. 42 trips to the CWS for SEC teams, including six national championships. About the five titles for the Pac-12. ACC's had 29 teams get to Omaha, 25 for the Big 12. Clemson, one of those teams from the ACC. Last time they were in Omaha, 2010. We'll see Ole Miss in the final later this evening. Trying to get back for the first time since 2014. Jordan Green leading off for Clemson. 7, 8, and 9. Green is 0 for 1 with a ground out and a walk. So we were talking about college guys getting to the big leagues. You're you watching these guys be able to extend their career, and they're kind of in that training ground right now as Green lines it up the middle for his first hit of the regional, leadoff single for Clemson in the sixth. Well, now you mentioned, you know, as you started broadcasting, being able to, you know, cover some of these guys that are now making it. I, I think it's really cool that, you know, growing up again, I was a huge fan of the game. You know, obviously played the game, but I, I love, you know, to follow it and everything about it. Grew up loving everything about it, you know, baseball cards, all that. Um, starting to see guys that I, you know, idolized as, as players now, their sons are now making the big leagues. I mean, you see the Bichettes, uh, Biggio, Guerreros. We're talking about Paul Bird, who played 14 years. I mean, I, I'm from right outside of Laf uh, Baton Rouge, where Paul went to LSU, and so, you know, followed his career when he was at LSU, and then while he was pitching in the big leagues. And so, I mean, you're, you're starting to see their sons make it. I think that is so cool. I mean, just to know that the experiences they got to experience, and now, you know, the dad gets to kind of live through them a little bit. Paul Bird's been hanging on every pitch for this Clemson team over the last three days. And we saw it with our colleague Pedro Gomez a couple of years ago. Has a son that was a pitcher, a uh, left-handed pitcher on the Arizona baseball team. And uh, Pedro kind of stepped away from some of the ESPN coverage as Hawkins goes away looking for a strikeout to follow his son on that journey through regionals, super regionals, and into the College World Series. You look at this, opening day rosters, LSU nine guys, including Alex Bregman, Aaron Nola. About ten guys from Cal State Fullerton and ten from Long Beach State. Yeah, I saw something, you know, that baseball's going to like 
the war wins above replacement and it was like what's the best you know war since like 1999 or whatever and that was the the Long Beach State was the answer that no one would have you know to guess on it was like man then all of a sudden they started naming names you're like wow these many this many guys came from this school and I think probably that's what has been maybe most frustrating for fans at the beach this year is our last couple of seasons that's a program that not only expects to be competitive, they expect to be producing big league players and playing in super regionals and getting to Omaha from time to time. And just a couple of non-competitive seasons for Long Beach State made a coaching change mid-year. That is certainly a proud program that has seen its fair share of big league stars. Pop up by Teodosio to right center field. Kirkland. Two down in the inning. Michael Green, top of the order, 0 for 4. Clemson not looking at, at a deficit right now that's insurmountable. Certainly with 10 outs remaining in the game. But closing in on kind of that danger zone where you start looking at the scoreboard and you start calculating outs and you realize we're going to do something. We've got to do it. All right, this is the part we've talked about how much production they've gotten from the top of the lineup when you've got a guy on. I know it's two outs, but and you're at the guys that you want. Another fly ball to center field. It's easy for Trey Kirkland. Another inning where Clemson strands a runner. They've left eight on in the game today. 24 runners stranded for Clemson over their three games here in the Oxford Regional. Trey Kirkland hit a three-run home run back in the second inning. Jacksonville State put a four spot turned a couple of double plays, big double plays with runners on base. Solo shot for Kyle Wilkie back in the second inning. All adds up to a 6-2 lead for Jacksonville State over Clemson. We go to the seventh inning. Isaac Alexander, Alex Strachan, and Andrew Naismith scheduled to hit for the Gamecocks to start things off in the seventh, dealing with Carson Spires, who's been able to kind of settle things down a little bit. Spires walked the first guy that he faced out of the bullpen. In fact, the first six pitches that he threw were all balls, but then he got a pop-up and a ground out to end the inning. Gave up a two-out single in the sixth, but otherwise no damage. And that's what Clemson needs for him, to put zeros on the board and then try and get something going offensively. But combination of Dylan Hathcock and Corley Woods, they've made the pitches they've needed to make. They haven't been overpowering, haven't been dominating in this game, but they've gotten outs. Yeah, you said it perfectly right there. They haven't been overpowering, so they've been pitching in and out of jams, but have made the pitches, but more... You know, more importantly, Jacksonville State's defense has made the plays, and that's something that we highlighted early on. The defense fielding 966, already has 78 errors this year, knowing that they could swing it. If the defense and pitching could give them a chance, their lineup was good enough to win the ball game. You know, I think if you look back, you wouldn't go, hey, Jacksonville State's defense won them the game. You would go, really? Isaac Alexander, 0 for 1. Single, walk, run, scored. He's got a 2-2 pitch coming from Carson Spires. Spires a full-time from the stretch guy. I guess you do whatever you feel comfortable with. With well, that. You're starting to see most relievers that are just strictly relievers 
go to that. And I like that because think about it. When although when I was strictly relieving, I liked the pitch from the windup, but most of the most you know the, the most important pitches you're going to throw in a game you know you're thinking guys are on base so why would i find a rhythm in the wind up when the most important pitch i'm probably going to make outside of obviously there's nobody on is going to be with a man on base so might as well learn how to pitch from the stress like to pitch from the stretch and continue to work on your mechanics while you're in the stretch spires loses alexander a leadoff walk Jacksonville State has had at least one base runner in every inning of this game. Clemson has not been able to retire the Gamecocks 1-2-3, three, three up, three down, however you want to describe it, in any of the seven innings we've played today. Strachan just drops this one in, short right field. Alexander easily goes first to third. And Jacksonville State in position to get themselves some insurance here in the top of the seventh. About muscling a ball in the right field. Ball right in on his hands. Show how strong he is, be able to punch that ball over the first baseman. Two and A. Smith. Elimination games going on all over the country. West Virginia and Texas A&M. Aggies are the home team. They trail 10-7. They've got the tying run at the plate at the bottom of the eighth inning with one out. Miami making easy work of Central Michigan up 15-2 in the seventh inning in Starkville. Creighton leading Cincinnati 6-1 in the Corvallis Regional. That's in the ninth inning. Dallas Baptist has a 9-6 lead over Florida in the seventh. Indiana State beating Ohio State 8-5. That's in Nashville. Stanford running away from Sacramento State up 12 to 3. Out in Stanford, California. Another walk. And the bases are loaded with nobody out. See the pitching coach will go out and talk with Carson Spires. Spires has worked an inning in two thirds, couple of hits, three walks, and a strikeout. You got Holt Jones out there warming up. A couple of crow hops on the mound. Did that one two or three times to kind of get loose. I don't know if that's something I, I'm picturing, making, you know, coming through the throw, finishing strong. Now he's back to the rubber, rubber conventional style. Three walks. Combination of Crawford, Griffith, and Spire. Six walks in the game. And a hit batter, so seven free passes. Clemson will bring the infield in all the way around. They've reached the point of the game where they just can't afford to let the deficit get any deeper, so they're going to try and get it out at the plate. Nash Adams, 
Chops it to third foul. Yeah, you said, mentioned coming in, Spires 12 walks in the 46 innings. So I mean, he's a guy that's not going to walk a lot of people. So to have three walks, very unconventional. And he came in in a tough spot, that 1-0 count. And so it was tough to find that rhythm early. But he started to settle in, but still not, not commanding the strike zone like he normally does. So right here with the infield in, you're, I mean, the angles are so are cut shorter. So you're looking at going up the middle. You get the ball past the pitcher. Look at that hole. You got Jordan Green right there to the right of the umpire, second base, Bill Fisher, and then you have Logan Davidson really playing it pull in the six hole. So I mean up the middle, you just get it past the pitcher. That's a knock. Adams had an RBI single in the second inning. Soft liner to second in the fourth. He popped out. In the fifth. Love a strikeout, pop out on the infield, or a ball hit right at an infielder. That's what Clemson's looking for. Instead, a wild pitch, and a run comes home to score. Alexander broke as soon as that ball was in the dirt. All three runners move up a base. It is now 7-2. to two. Tough pitch to handle. Looked like Wilkie's been doing a nice job blocking, just tried to glove it instead of throwing the body over there. But you know base is loaded, man. You've got to sacrifice that body and throw that whole thing over there. And now a walk and the bases loaded are, or excuse me, are loaded again. Seven runs. Ties the most that the Gamecocks have ever scored in an NCAA regional game. They had seven last night. They've got seven on the board today. And maybe not done here in the top of the seventh inning. New pitcher coming into the game, Jacob Hennessy, who started game one on Friday. He'll pitch for the second time this weekend. We'll take a timeout. Jacob Hennessy, the new pitcher in the game for Clemson. Junior from Moore, South Carolina, six feet, 230 pound left hander. 21st appearance of the year, four and one. And Hennessy had kind of a dual role. Started six games this year in his 20 total appearances. This is 15th relief appearance of the season. And this was the game one starter. Or two and a third. Gave up six hits, three earned runs, walked one and struck out one against Illinois on Friday afternoon. Chase Robinson in the nine hole has been on base twice. He's got a double with a run scored. That was back in the second inning. He walked in the fourth, reached on a fielder's choice in the fifth. Base is loaded. Again, the infield in for Clemson. Jacksonville State with a five-run lead, and they've got to be sensing a knockout punch here in the seventh. Well, Coach Lee still has the infield in, holding out hope right here, but you're right, a big hit right here would be that knockout blow. That is a big strikeout for Jacob Hennessy out of the bullpen for the first out of the inning. Trey Kirkland now coming to the plate. Maybe the biggest hit of the game all the way back in the second inning. A couple of guys on, hit a three-run bomb into the left field bullpen. Made it four to nothing at the time. Clemson adjusts their defense. They now play for the double play in the middle of the infield. 
in at the corners, third and first, right at the edge of the grass. Popped out of play. If you're a Gamecocks fan and you're thinking about the long ball. Four times this year, Jacksonville State has hit a grand slam. Trey Kirkland is his seventh home run of the year earlier in the ballgame. He's behind in the count now, one and two. And this team's done a nice job of coming out of the bullpen, just pumping strikes, and that's what you need. I mean, I'm not saying this is still only a five-run lead. And Clemson has three at-bats left, and they have some firepower in that offense. So be able to make a pitch right here, get a ground ball or maybe a big strikeout to get out of this inning with no more damage be a big victory for Clemson. Two two. Roller to the left side. Chance for two. Davidson to Green to Grayson Bird. Not in time. Run comes home to score. Just took a little too long to develop, and Trey Kirkland can fly. Yeah, you said it. I mean, that ball's not hit hard enough. And just the first thing, Trey Kirkland can fly, and that's the biggest thing. He got there down the line. He knew he needed to run hard right there. Sometimes you'll see guys a little upset, not quite get out of the box, but Kirkland put the head down and smell that RBI, and that's a huge insurance run as well. Naismith gets to third. Nash Adams is out at second. Kirkland reaches on the fielder's choice, drives in his fourth run of the day. He's up to 28 for the year. And Strachan came home to score. So a six-run lead in the seventh with Cole Frederick at the plate. Pitch chopped foul. Hedrick's got a couple of hits in the game. Jim Case coached his team to its first regional win in school history yesterday. The eight runs scored today, the most in a single tournament game by Jacksonville State. Hawkins waits back. Throws over to Bird, and that ends the inning. Hancock strand a couple, but they add a run as well. It's 8-2. to two. NCAA Regional Baseball is presented by Capital One. Oxford Regional. What's happening around the country? UCLA beating Baylor right now in an elimination game. Georgia Tech stayed alive. They've got to beat Auburn twice. Georgia's got to beat Florida State twice. Louisville's got to beat Illinois State twice. East Carolina, they're only at day two. Stanford, no trouble right now with Sacramento State and West Virginia trying to close it out against Texas A&M and eliminate the Aggies. Those are the hosts that are in trouble. Who would you give the best shot? My first thought goes to the East Carolina one. Oh, really? Yeah, playing Campbell and Quinnipiac. Campbell and Quinnipiac there. East Carolina's been good all year long. They have, but they've had some trouble in postseason play in recent years getting out of, you know, what, one trip to a Super Regional in recent seasons.
feels like Georgia's got a tall task against Florida State. I, I'm not saying that it's not possible. Well, the way the ball's jumping out of that part, seems like somebody will get hot. Already 26 home runs in the Athens Regional. Oh, man. The top regional, they're leading the pack. I mean, so you get a couple, you get a game going where you get some hitters high, you never know what can happen. Honestly, don't know enough about Loyola Marymount, kind of in the depth of their pitching. I mean, just given what UCLA has done and how consistent they've been throughout the course of the season, it's hard to pick against them being able to come back through that bracket. That change up almost like a Bugs Bunny change up. Look at Woods right there. He knows it. He's like, I've been talking first rounder about my man Davidson. I got the Bugs Bunny change up to get him out. Third time that Logan Davidson has struck out in the game today. Grayson Bird 0 for 2 with a walk. I will say this Loyola Marymount, LMU was really impressive last night. It was a 2-2 game. They took the lead in the seventh inning. Dealt with some UCLA base runners down the stretch. And pitched it really well. well. I think if you're talking teams with pitching staffs to be able to come back and play that many games, UCLA would be probably at the top of the list. Yeah. It's the one thing you'd also kind of point to with Georgia. And I know you're, you're past Losey and Hancock at this point, but like George has gotten to the point where every arm that Scott Strickland runs out is pumping it in mid-90s, low mid-90s. Well, that's what you got with Elliott earlier today in that nine-inning complete game two-hitter. Just a dad right now, right? I said that's what it is. If it comes down to it, that's your boy at the plate. Never know. Could be, you know, it'll make a run into the bottom of the lineup right here. This could be his last ever college at bat. Full count. One out in the inning. Base is empty. Grayson Bird looking for his first hit of the game. He's got four hits in the regional. He goes down swinging. Back-to-back -back strikeouts for Corley Woods. How about the job that he's done since coming into the game? Three strikeouts since entering for the starter, Hathcock. He's only allowed one hit. And he's going to the changeup. I mean, he's gotten two big lefties out on the changeup, and I love the excitement. These guys know, man. They know they were the underdog, even though they, you know, they won that first game. They know they came into this, you know, this field at the number four seed, no one expecting anything. Two and a third, just one hit. Clemson down to seven outs, trailing by six runs in an elimination game. Jacksonville State lost 16 to two to Ole Miss in the regional opener. Came back and won seven to five yesterday to eliminate Illinois. They're trying to eliminate Clemson as well. Rio to Kyle Wilkie, two for three in the game with a home run and a single. Three and one. Jacksonville State started this season 11 and 14. They have won 27 of their last 35 games. That one got away from Woods. Wilkie draws the walk. Second walk by Woods. Regional final coming your way tonight, 8 central time. That's the local time here at Oxford, 9 o'clock on the East Coast. Ole Miss and the winner of this game starting to look like Jacksonville State. 
Clemson still with seven outs to work with, trying to climb back into it. Ole Miss with a win over both of these teams already in regional play. Say good news for the winner, whichever team turns out to be. You're going to have a couple of hours in between games, so you, it's not just cram a sandwich, slam a Gatorade, and move on. I think that was a, just knowing what it feels like if once you win that game, like as a player, I don't want to start as soon as possible. You're ready to play yeah, again. Because, I mean, you, you're talking about momentum. We've talked about that. It's already on your side. You already have that game under your belt. Like, let's go. The more rest you, you have, you start to come down from that adrenaline rush and everything. So I think the more time that they have, it, it plays more into the 2-0 you know, the, 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 the guy, the, the team waiting for you. Two and two now to Briar Hawkins. And I guess for Ole Miss, kind of sitting back watching this game, one, they're glad to see Corley Woods go an extended amount and know it's the second time that he's pitched this weekend because he's been really good, especially with that changeup. And then probably would like to see another arm or two from Jacksonville State come out of the bullpen. Well, I think that's where you're at. You're, he's definitely at that point of no return. That's 45th pitch where he's not coming back today for sure. And so when you're at Jacksonville State, you're like, hey, if six-run lead, how long can we stretch him out? That way we can save as many bullets as we can because you know it's going to be a long way to go. Runner goes, and that pitch hits Spryer Hawkins between the numbers, so he will head down to first base. Kyle Wilkie moves to second. Well, I mentioned, I mentioned maybe pitch it. counts. I mean, he's at 40. That's the 46 one. He'd only gone 44 twice this year. Corley Woods threw an inning and a third on Friday. Jim Case out to the mound. A coach has already got his mind made up when he goes out at this point, or is it a legitimate conversation about how you feel? Man, I think that's just the coaches. And the coaches know it. Sometimes it's about looking the player now. I used to have coaches say, I can tell when I walked out there, if I looked you in the eye, if you wanted to stay in the game. And you know, a coach would say, he would just walk out there, how you feel, the way you answered, he'd be like, all right, he'd turn back around. Or how you feel, huh? give me the next guy up. I mean, a coach just, if he knows his players, he's in tune with the players. And for the most part, you're talking about Coach Case has been around so long, he knows what a player looks like when he really doesn't have it. Wood's still rolling with confidence, a little upset. I think the, the composure needs to be a little bit better on um, not only when it's going good, but when it's going bad, he's letting emotions kind of dictate himself. So I think that's what maybe Coach Case goes out there and talks to him about. Sam Hall to the plate, 0 for 3 in this ball game. Oh, and another hit batter. So now the bases are loaded for Clemson. Two out in the inning. They've got to have a big base hit from Jordan Green. That's two in a row that have hit batters. Briar Hawkins between the numbers. Sam Hall like on the shoulder. And Jordan Green stepping in. Jordan Green's been on base twice. A ground out, a walk, and a single, but he will not face Corley Woods. Jacksonville State will make the call to the bullpen. A left-hander coming in. It's Michael Gilliland. I'll tell you more about Gilliland, who inherits a bit of a mess. Base is loaded, but two out. Jacksonville State leading it by six. 
Michael Gilliland, the freshman from Boaz, Alabama, making his second appearance of the weekend. Worked a third of an inning, gave up a hit, had a strikeout in his first outing in the Oxford Regional. 18th appearance of the season, 30 strikeouts, 27 walks. He's got a mess also. Good news for Jacksonville State, two outs in the inning. Bad news, bases loaded. And how about the way this un inning has unfolded? So you've got Corley Woods pinpoint with the changeup. Yeah, right. right made, Nasty. I was calling it Bugs Bunny changeup. Made the two most dangerous hitters in the lineup look silly in Logan Davidson and Grayson Berg. Walks Kyle Wilkie, hits Briar Hawkins, hits Sam Hall. All of a sudden, you're watching from the dugout. That's Wilkie at third, Briar Hawkins at second, Sam Hall over at first. And Jordan Green at the plate. Clemson as a team, 81, excuse me, 82 home runs on the year. Top 10 in the entire country. And the first pitch is a ball to Jordan Green. We talked about leaving guys on base, getting the big hit when it counts. I mean, this is right now, I had the, you, just the sense and the feeling is like Clemson, the hitters are just, you know, not having productive at bats. This is how you motivate a lineup now. Get a big hit right here, and we got a ball game. Green comes up empty. Corley Woods went two and a third in relief. He only gave up one hit. But he walked two and hit two. Well, he needs one of those boomstick. You remember we talked about there on the arm. He's got boomstick. How much would that excite the Clemson dugout if he went big fly? Q shot foul. out of play. Couple of pitches spoiled by Jordan Green. Was 0 for 10 in the regional before his last at bat singled up the middle. That was in the sixth inning. Green had a good ACC tournament for Clemson. Base hit right here would make the Oxford Regional a little more memorable for Jordan Green. Pokes it out to shallow right. Long run for Frederick, the second baseman. He'll make the catch in fair territory. And Clemson leaves them loaded. 11 left on base in this game for the Clemson Tigers through seven. Jacksonville State leads it 8-2. 8-2, a six-run lead for the Gamecocks over the Tigers. Jacksonville State and Clemson. Monty Lee got to be a little frustrated today. 11 men left on base for Clemson in this game through seven innings. There have been opportunities. There have been ba base runners. When we talked with Monty Lee back in the fifth inning, he said, we've got to come up with that big hit, the clutch hit. When we've got guys on base, they've not been able to do that. Yeah, two of the innings ended with double plays. That one right there, bases loaded, 11 today. Base is loaded. If you're watching it right now, you just saw a walk-off grand slam from Texas A&M to win 11-10 over West Virginia. 
in the bottom of the ninth inning. If you're not following along on bases loading, what are you doing? Whip around coverage available through ESPN3, the bases loaded channel. All coverage available on the ESPN app. Bryce Blom, a walk-off, bottom of the ninth, grand slam to keep Texas A&M season alive. They win it 11-10. to It's a guy that started his college career here in Oxford. 5-4, quite in time to finish the double play, the throw offline from Green. How about the SEC drama? Auburn 0-2 count, two outs at, at Georgia Tech. They hit a walk-off. You got AM, a walk-off grand slam, 2-2. Two, two, both teams down to their last strike. Well, Rich, you got it on your iPad. I'm watching right now. He throws the bat up. He knows it. Wow, think of the excitement that would be to go through that. And the heartbreak for West Virginia. And their home ballpark hosting for the first time. Pitch in the dirt. Gaddis scoots down to second. He's able to hold on the back. On the wild pitch. So another host is eliminated. And there are two sides to that coin, too. As you watch the uh, the kind of the shots after the game, the elation that goes for Texas A&M, and just pure heartbreak for West Virginia. Yeah, that's what my wife always tells me about. Like, I don't feel, you know, I, I see that. I'm happy for the guy. He goes, but, you know, as a former pitcher's wife watching that, you go, I think of the guy who just gave up that home run. And, you know, I think back of last year when the ball went off of Stephen Williams' glove, that Florida-Auburn Super Regional, and ended up being a walk-off homer for Florida to go to the World Series. Like, man, it's awesome for Florida. But, like, think about what he's having to go through. And you watch the, the Auburn coach. I remember Gabe Gross was one of the first guys out there to see him. Man, that's a tough thing to go through as a kid. This ball lifted to right field. That's down for a base hit. Isaac Alexander, throw comes back toward the infield. Gaddis comes around to score. An insurance run for Jacksonville State. They now lead it 9-2. to two. RBI single for Alexander. Second hit of the game, 32nd run bat at the end of the year. So Texas A&M and Duke will now meet in the regional final in Morgantown, West Virginia. Beat Duke twice. Teodosio waits on it to come down. They're two down in the inning. All six SEC Western Division teams that made a regional are playing in a regional final. Ole Miss, Mississippi State, Arkansas, LSU, and Auburn as 2-0 and o teams, and Texas A&M fighting through the loser's bracket. Well, there was discussion all year that not only was the SEC the toughest conference in college baseball, but the SEC West taking out the six teams that made it at Alabama being the seventh team that didn't make the conference tournament or the regionals. But those six teams, I mean, that just shows you what each weekend was in the conference. Nay Smith staying alive at the plate. Fouls it off there. Ball and two strikes. Absent a ninth inning rally for Florida. 
The Gators would be the first SEC team to be eliminated. They're down 9-7 to seven to Dallas Baptist in the Lubbock Regional. Everybody else, though, still alive. Georgia playing Florida State. They're underway. We're going to watch that one. It's on ESPNU. Florida State leading 2 to nothing over Georgia early. Smith battling two balls, two strikes, two out. Working against Tennessee, and he fouls another one back. Strike three called. Naismith goes away looking. A strikeout for Jacob Hennessy. But another run on the board for Jacksonville State. A seven run advantage for the Gamecocks. Back with you in the Oxford Regional Elimination Game. Jacksonville State seemingly in control of seven. Nine runs, ten hits, no errors. Two, seven, and none for Clemson. National seeds facing elimination. UCLA's got to beat Loyola Marymount twice. In fact, everybody's got to win twice against guys on the other side. All of these national seeds have a loss in their regional, and two hosts at this point have been eliminated. First, it was the number 16 national seed, Oregon State. Now the number 15 national seed, West Virginia. It's not easy to get to a super regional, and it's not easy to get to Omaha. Yeah. You got to think football. <coughs> so excuse me. Sorry, it would probably be the. I'm not, I'm not saying the easiest, but it, it, when it comes down to everything falling your way, this baseball postseason is so tough. You see teams that for the whole year have been so dominant, and all of a sudden you match up with a team that might match up with you really good, and all of a sudden you're looking to have to win three games in a matter of about 36 hours to stave off elimination. Well, and if this final score holds for the second consecutive year, you will have an Ohio Valley Conference team facing off against Ole Miss in a must-win two-game scenario. A year ago, it was, a t was Tennessee Tech. Now, are Jacksonville State and Tennessee Tech the same team? Probably not. Not quite the same offense. But Tennessee Tech, when their name was announced, and Jim Case talked to the media Back on Monday of this week, they said that they would draw inspiration and kind of draw some confidence from seeing what Tennessee Tech did a year ago. It's dropped. Justin Hawkins, strikeout. Two to three. For coverage of the Division I Baseball Regionals, scores, interactive brackets, and more, go to NCAA.com. Clemson down to five outs. Bryce Teodosio, nine hole hitter. He's been on base twice, RBI single, a walk, and a fly out. Really nice changeup by Gilliland. Florida has gotten a run home in the bottom of the ninth inning to make their game with Dallas Baptist a one-run game. It's nine to eight. With two outs and a runner at third in the bottom of the ninth. It's like everywhere you look. One one to Teodosio. Strike nips the corner one and two. Let's 
Seven run lead for Jacksonville State. Nine hole hitter for Clemson. Check swing. They'll say Teodosio went around. Tim Vesey punches him out himself. Back to back strikeouts for Michael Gilliland here in the eighth. Gilliland had been going change up, change up, dominant, and all of a sudden changes the approach, goes breaking ball back foot. Did he go? What do you think? Close. This ball up the middle, a base hit for Michael Green. He hit that one in the screws. I always wonder, unless it's just like a three-quarter swing where there's absolutely no question why you don't appeal to the first base or the third base umpire. I agree with you. That's something that should always be because for the most part, unless he truly sees the head of that bat turn, uh, but it's so much easier of a call a for that angle. first base, third base umpire. Dallas Baptist does get the final out. They beat Florida 9-8 to and eliminate the Gators, first SEC team to be knocked out of a regional. Chopper foul down the third baseline from Logan Davidson. Tough day at the plate for Davidson. It's one for four with three strikeouts. He did sneak one through the left side of the infield for a base hit. Davidson two for ten in the regional. A couple of hits, a couple of walks, but has struck out six times. Pop up left side. Gaddis, the third baseman, makes the catch, and Clemson is down to its final three outs. Jacksonville State looking for more insurance at the top of the ninth. Jacob Hennessy has given Clemson a chance. He kept this game in check since entering. Hennessy was the game one starter. Against Illinois, lasted two and a third. Mom here. Glad to see Jacob get another shot on the mound. He's pitched well today. At least I would assume she's glad to see him get another shot today. Oh, absolutely. Two innings, one hit, one run. A couple of strikeouts for Hennessy since entering the game. Facing Nash Adams. Adams takes ball one. One and two now to Adams. RBI single in the second inning. Soft line drive out, a pop out, and a walk for Adams in this game. We've talked about the success of the SEC. How about the success of the Missouri Valley? All three MVC teams have reached regional finals. It's a good baseball league. Michigan, the only Big Ten team that's still alive, is Ohio State lost and was eliminated in Nashville. Indiana State beat them 10 to 5. Strike three called. Adams goes away looking. That's back-to-back -back strikeouts to end the eighth and start the ninth for Hennessy. Nice work right there by Hennessy, moving the fastball down and in. Started away, a little change up away. Had Adams thinking everything going away, and then spots the fastball perfectly on the inside part of the plate.
Chase Robinson takes strike two. Hennessy taking advantage of maybe a little bit more generous strike zone from Tim Vesey. Robinson able to hold up there. Two balls and two strikes. It's popped up a mile on the infield. And Jordan Green will jog in and make the catch. Earlier he had somebody take one away from him, so he said, I mean, he was he was 20 yards when he started yelling, I got it away from that one. So he, he got his pop fly back. I think that might be his like sixth or seventh pop fly of the game. He's run a couple down in right field, had some in the back behind second base. Hey, I like a man who wants to take control, come get that ball. You can tell Hennessy wanted no part of it. Kevin tells us that's six. Bonnie Lee out to make a pitching change. Nice work by Jacob Hennessy in relief. Tip our cap to uh, Kevin Maloney and Adam Kupfer. They've done yeoman's work in the stats department this weekend. We'll be back. Holt Jones into the game. Big tall right-hander. 6'8", 215. One of the tallest pitchers in Clemson baseball history. Santa Monica, California. Here the weather is nice there. 43 strikeouts, 24 walks, 2 and 1 on the year, sub 4 ERA. Going to hitting 184 off of him. They see a 23 hits. Nice. Let's get some hitters out. Looks to me if you just keep those walk numbers down, the strikeouts are up, the hits are down. You know, if you, next year as you come back, Prove those walk numbers, you'll see that ERA drop from that 3-9. Always a little perplexed when you see a big guy like that. And then you look at the radar gun and he's throwing like 87. And that's not the case with Holt Jones. He's mid-90s with that fastball. Yeah, I remember this one guy's like, uh, you think of Chris Young, he was like 6'10", right? And for the Padres and, whoa, and then, oh, yeah, I think Princeton, I think he came out of. And you're like, man, I think this guy's going to throw noise. And it was just like 90. And then you have this. But I mean, that's uh, 87 to 90. Yeah. Arms are different, man. That's why you have the guys that are 5'7 that can throw 95. And just because you're tall doesn't mean you throw hard. I think it's a big stereotype. And that was a 94 mile an hour fastball to Trey Kirkland to open the at bat. Kirkland hits a fly ball to left. May have gotten that one off the end of the bat. Hall runs it down at the edge of the warning track. And that ends the inning. Clemson down to its final three outs as we go to the bottom of the ninth. Little game recap for you back in the second inning. Jacksonville State got it started with an RBI single from Nash Adams and then a big fly from Trey Kirkland. Three-run homer. That made it 4-0. Clemson would get a couple of runs in the second. A home run from Kyle Wilkie and an RBI single from Teodosio. But it has been all Jacksonville State since. They've been able to come up with big hits. And clutch hits in the eighth inning, little insurance, RBI single from Isaac Alexander, and now we are in the bottom of the ninth inning. Grayson Bird, 0 for 3 with a walk. Likely his final at bat as a college baseball player, the senior for Clemson takes a strike and goes to 1-1. One one. Grayson Bird hit a home run and Clemson's opening round win against Illinois, an 8-4 win. Finds this one to right. It's run down by Robinson, and there's one away. Not the way Paul wanted to see it in for his son Grayson. 
or at least the college piece of it in. I do think he's an interesting to watch, kind of moving forward. Those are the power numbers. Pretty good first base and defensively as well. Wilkie at the plate. Not only a good regional, but a good game today. Seven hits and 12 at bats. Solo home run and a base hit today. Also a walk. He pops this one up to shallow right. Robinson coming in. He will once again squeeze it for the second out. That's kind of a neat moment a second ago after Grayson Bird flew out to right. Teammates. Kind of met him as he was coming off. Senior in with the program a lot after starting his career at LSU, transferring in. I think guys recognize the moment. You know, you know that, hey, this guy put a lot of blood, sweat, and tears into college baseball, and you know, that last swing will be his last chance. Friar Hawkins batting with two out and the base is empty. Jacksonville State on its way to its first ever regional final. They got their first postseason win in the NCAA tournament game yesterday. Eliminating Illinois 7-5. They are on the verge of eliminating Clemson as well. And we'll have a matchup coming up tonight in a little over two hours against Ole Miss. Rebels the number 12 national seed, the regional host here in Oxford. They beat Jacksonville State 16-2 on Friday night, won 6-1 against Clemson. This one's not over yet as Briar Hawkins lines it into left field, a two-out single. And the third hit of the game for Hawkins. DH has had a nice game. Jacksonville State about to win its third game all time against an ACC team. They have one win against Georgia Tech, one win against Louisville, and trying to add one against Clemson to the resume. First pitch strike to Sam Hall. Another tight game going in Baton Rouge. Southern Miss has the bases loaded with nobody out in the bottom of the ninth inning, trailing 12 to nine. This tournament has already seen two walk-off home run winners. Last night, Auburn over Georgia Tech, a three-run home run. Today, Texas A&M over West Virginia, a grand slam. 0-2 to Sam Hall. That's why you need the ESPN app, where you can watch bases loaded coverage or keep it locked into the bases loaded channel. For Jacksonville State, if they can miss this final out, they got to turn around in two hours and play again. Ground ball up the middle, base hit for Clemson. Sam Hall with his first hit of the game. Tigers have got first and second now with two out. Like I mentioned, I don't think it matters how much time. I think you'd rather less time, but being able to just recover, get you something to eat a little bit, but this is what you play for. You want to make that regional final. You obviously can't do it until they finish off this inning. Clubs is not going away easy. TCU has defeated Central Connecticut State, eliminated CCSU, so TCU and Arkansas tonight in the regional final in Fayetteville. TCU will have to beat the Razorbacks twice. Winner of the Fayetteville Regional will meet the winner of the Oxford Regional. If that winner is Arkansas, then next week's Super Regional will be at Balm Walker Stadium. Gilliland. 
Delivers a strike to Green. Hawkins at second, Sam Hall at first, Gilliland on the mound, dealing with Jordan Green, who's got one hit in the ball game. One ball and two strikes. Jacksonville State now a pitch away from its first ever regional final, a meeting with Ole Miss later tonight here at Swayze Field. Corley Woods would be the winning pitcher for Jacksonville State. He will improve to 7 and 0. Oh. Brooks Crawford is going to take the loss and fall to 1 and 5. Two balls and two strikes. Michael Gilliland. Popped up. Shallow right. Frederick, the second baseman, camped under it, makes the catch in Jacksonville State for the first time in school history. Will play in a regional final. They want to advance to a Super Regional. They will have to beat Ole Miss twice. The first opportunity will come tonight at 8 o'clock local time. Ole Miss beat Jacksonville State on Friday 16-2. Since then, Jacksonville State has eliminated Illinois, and they have eliminated the Clemson Tigers. An impressive win for the Gamecocks. Yeah, we talked about a game of missed opportunities for Clemson, leaving 14 guys on base. Jacksonville State left. 10, but they did get the big hits when it counted. A big three-run home run by Trey Kirkland got it all started. So our bracket looks like this as we go to the regional final Ole Miss in Jacksonville State, the number one seed, the number four seed meeting. We'll have that game for you starting at 8 o'clock from here in Oxford. Obviously a difficult ending to the season for Clemson. The emotions of the final game of the year of seniors, of juniors that are probably done. Then on the opposite end of the spectrum, a lot of smiles for the Gamecocks of Jacksonville State, who advanced to a regional final out of the Ohio Valley Conference. Our final score, Gamecocks 9, Clemson Tigers 2. Don't forget, you can head over to ESPNU for more regional action as Florida State is taking on the Georgia Bulldogs in Athens. For Lance Cormier and our entire crew, I'm Richard Cross. Thanks for joining us. Jacksonville State headed to a regional final for the first time in school history.